Welcome to The Pull Up. I'm your host, Joe Budden, here with yet another really amazing guest that I do not know how to categorize, because <laughs> niggas are doing so much shit now. <laughs> how do I categorize Lil Duvall? Lil Duvall. Actor, Just comedian. No, 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 come on. No, 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 yeah. no. Musician. Entertainer. I'm an entertainer. It is. I mean, oh my fuck! We're not starting this interview like this. That is how I start. I mean, that's that's what I am. That's what that's what entertainment always been from day one. If you think about it, like think about Sammy Davis Jr. and people like that. It's always been they did more than one thing, and it's just coming back to that now. If you look even on social media, all the young motherfuckers, they don't just do one thing no more. I can't tell you about nothing that the young niggas do. I can. I watch them. I, I, I don't, fuck with I don't, Well, I watch them, but... I feel like they are offspring of me, so I pay attention to them. Well, are you as passionate in all, in all the fields? Yeah, I'm in passionate in entertaining people. So whichever way I can do that, whichever avenue I can use, I like to do it. You know, I use, I use that. I use music, comedy, social media, movies, TV, any kind of way. Oh, this nigga's smart. Good. <laughs> nigga smart. God, they're using everything. I ain't smart. I just it's just natural. You know, I'm definitely not smart. I ain't smart at all. I just pay attention. Okay, so I'm then I'm roll with that. We are here with Lou Duvall, the entertainer. Mm -hmm. That don't have like the ring to it, but it do. When you can when you actually do it. When you do it. Yeah, it do. When you actually good at doing it or or you been successful at doing it in all different ways. Well that's kinda exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. And at first, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't figure out what the fuck me and you were supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. But then the more I thought about you, that is exactly, you are the perfect person for me to talk to about shit because you are the perfect person for me to talk to because of this, I don't want to say newfound transition but because you kind of been ingratiated in music, but mm -hmm. you've popped in music recently mm -hmm. and I do not know you to be music. a musician. Right. And that is the new wave. Uh -huh. That's the new trend. That's kind of, that's standard now. Uh-huh. I think it's always been, I, get, I think I'm just the first one to actually blow out of it. Because they doing it. It's been going on. I've been doing it. That's why it was easy for me. It wasn't that hard of a transition. You've been doing what? Music. I got into comedy with a music song. I reflipped Music Soul Child, Buy a Girl a Drink in the that's Club. very different. That's very different. No, it's not. Tell me more. What you mean, why do you think it's different? That's like Chris Rock's uh, song. That's like Chris Rock's song when he was talking about fucking, you know. All the music shit. now is damn near spoofs to me. Every, every, okay. Even the regular music is spoofs. Like, I seen the transition when it started getting spoofy, like around uh, when T-Pain started coming out. Because when he started coming out, if you listen to all his music, all his music is kind of funny. It's kind okay. of funny about buy a girl a drink in the club, um, I'm going to buy you a drink. That's like my song, Bitch, You Is My Girlfriend, I'm going to buy you a girl a drink in the club. Then you got that song about I'm in love with a stripper. Don't that sound like some shit I say, a comedy motherfucker I say? So it's yeah. naturally evolved into what it is now. It's just people ain't been paying attention. But that I'm in love with a stripper song, while it's a funny line that somebody funny may say, it's great sonically. So it's so, so living it's not, my best life. So, but it's not received as anything comedic, right? Kind of my point with you and living my best life. Mm -hmm. As great as you are at comedy, mm -hmm. that song wasn't received that way. Did you make it with that? It, it kind of was, because the song before that, people were receiving my fans was. Like, like I did Kill Nigga, With The Shoulders. I'm talking about the shit that went everywhere. Nigga, it did go everywhere. To, to me, I didn't do it to blow up. I just made the music and it just w took off because of the feel of it. For real? Yes. I didn't, I've been like, this was so the same formula the I've been used. This, no, this God the same damn it. The smile bits come from jokes I do. All my songs come from jokes and I make them into songs. But time out, the sexual healing drums. Mm hmm. Anytime I know somebody to. That's not sexual healing, that's uh, Midnight Star. Midnight Star. You gotta know your music, man. We gonna Listen, talk about all it. All the drums. I know more than you do. Hey, you the musician. All the drums, cause that's your song. You sampled it, goddamn. <laughs> I, I know all the songs. But all of them, that drum pattern, when that familiarized drum pattern, when you hear it, or when I hear it, I say, all right, the producer's trying to catch one. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, and then the features you got, mm -hmm. I said, oh, 
This nigga might be trying to catch one. Mm-hmm. And then you caught one with the hook. Mm-hmm. So I would have never thought, I, I never thought Lou Duvall, the comedian, is making. That's how I win, but not paying, people not paying attention to me. Mm. Like, y'all, while y'all just doing y'all thing, I, it's easier to, to get around. Just like, that's how I did it. It's like, I guess that's one of the ways, because the people that didn't matter wasn't paying no attention. You see what I'm saying? And the people that did matter was supporting it, and that's how it blew. It blew from my fans pushing it so hard, it made other people like, what the fuck is this shit here? And then next thing you know, that's Duval, and boom, 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 boom. And here we are talking about this shit. You're on Empire. Uh-huh. So technically we're label mates. Everybody's on Empire. Who ain't? You on <laughs> You can say, I mean. <laughs> but they, they, <laughs> they on Empire. <laughs> but I mean, well, why do you think everybody's going to Empire? Because it's, it's the way of the, the, the system now. I mean, you could be independent and start your own thing. It's a gift and a curse. I say, if you understand the business, you know what I'm saying? Because when you on Empire, it's all on you for the most part. Like, they're going to do that what they do, but at the same time, it's really good for somebody that's already got something going on. Now, if you ain't got nothing going on, I wouldn't say go to something independent. I would say, if you're trying to, in this day and age, you might want to get with a label and do whatever, but for somebody like me, Empire is perfect. But was that, really, was that an option for you? Were you, think, uh, were you ever... Yeah, they, when I, when I, for the, you talking about labels? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a big label thing. A lot of the motherfuckers was offering way more money and all that, but I didn't really do it for the money. I didn't, I really wanted to get my, what I wanted out, my agenda in life. See, that's what a large part of, of these, uh, these sessions that I do uh, is all about. Talking to people that were kind of clear in their journey and knew what they wanted mm-hmm. and went about Conducting business is that which is why I don't talk to a whole lot of young people. I knew what I wanted since I was 12. I always knew. Which was? Entertaining people. I got on my, I posted a lot on my social media, but just as a reminder to people on my, you know how you got a senior book in high school? I don't know if they do that anymore, but I back dropped then, out, but I saw a couple. Yeah, so it just tell you whether you see yourself in 10 years or 20 years, and I said, see myself making people laugh and entertaining the world. And that's what I do now. I say entertaining, even 25 years ago. That, uh, 26, something like that. Great, so in 26 years. Talk, I've always did it. Talk to me about, uh, talk, tell me about the times that you were discouraged then. I never was, because it, it always worked. I ain't got one of them sad stories. <laughs> My life has always been pretty good for the most point. <laughs> and it's always, I've, I've always progressed. You were never sad or depressed? Mm-mm. Now when it comes in, I've always was popping in some form. I mean, like even before I was popping to, in this, I was popping in certain. Well, I've you always have, had yeah, fans. You have been kind of popping. I've for always a long had time. fans. Like even before that, I was always the shit in Florida. You know, so I've, I've always been popular. Even in high school, I've always been popular. So being popular wasn't it. it that that wasn't hard for me. It wasn't. I did like how most people when they get fame, like even with this song, people think, oh, he don't get to be. This shit ain't new to me. I mean, it's new to everybody else. It ain't to sound arrogant. It's just like, I don't, I'm not impressed with the, the matrix of it. I really like touching people. So that's what I get out of it. Because you're old. See, this is why I like I've talk. always been this like this. Like talking it sounds now. like I'm old. It comes because I'm older now. But if you listen to it, that's the good thing about the internet and all that. You can Google all my old interviews. I'm talking the same exact way now when I was young that I am was then. It's just... Now, you want to listen. So you were never discouraged by, I remember at one point you were like, there was, I won't say a rumor, but an ongoing, ongoing sentiment that, because you were one of the early people to pop on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably back in 2000 and early, 10, mm-hmm. 9. When it first came out. Yeah, somewhere around there. So then as, uh, as opportunities started to be birthed from that, People started to say, well, Lou Duvall should be having something else popping because he was the first person to get this pop in here. I never, I never make, I never and judge it, my, my, my success by somebody else. I, and what they cliche, say? But with Twitter, I already had an agenda in my head and I already knew how much power I had. So I knew when I got on Twitter first, I saw it like 
oh shit. It was like prime real estate. Nobody was on it. It was a few people, but I knew how much power, and I saw the future right then. Or MySpace, I saw the future. I was like, this is where it's it at. It was lit on MySpace. Yeah, this is where it's at. This is where it's going. This is, and I realized at that moment, I didn't need nobody. All I had was, I, I, everything I need was right here, all the tools. And so I realized I can plant all these seeds and, and I can birth myself into everybody. And that's what I've been doing for the last 13 years. I've been putting seeds in everybody and I've seen it come back around. And like, even like Say Something is Basic Bitch. I started that, now it was just a household name. You know how much power that is to manipulate this, the world, to make everybody say what you're saying just off of something that you, I knew how much power I had from day one so I knew how to use this. And I was like, I don't need nobody. Everything I want is right here. Why, what is it that's so hard about what you just said for the young people to kind of realize? I think they realize? get it. It's us that don't get it. Older people, they yeah. just starting to get it. Young people is second nature because they grew up in it. Yeah, they get they it. born in this time. And, and I, they, they watch people like me or you that's been on there. They've been studying they watch us. the fuck ups. They studied <laughs> us. And see, today, I know I'm their daddy. You, like, we their father <laughs> when it comes to social media. So it's like, if you hate them, you really hating on yourself because... You watch, they watched you. And they, like, and me and Charlamagne talked about that before, like, a lot of them thought we was trolls. And I really wasn't no troll. Was, like, I was really, that's how I you thought. Serious, yeah, yeah, I was serious, but it came off as that. It comes off as that if you watching, it's like a kid watching somebody that they want to be like, if they, they looking at all this and, and a different, another thing different between probably me and Charlamagne, Charlamagne talked to them a lot more. I never talked to them. You know what I'm saying? I never like, I ain't gonna say I never, I ain't shit on them, but I never like held their hand and cause maybe because I ain't grow up like that. I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I never, and they probably took that as I was dissing them or something, but I really wasn't. I just I don't talk to people I don't really know. You same. Know? So, but they took it like that. But at the end of the day, they know better than we do. Like we, like my shows now, I have, I have a, a whole genre of people from 18 to 40 that come to my shows and now I see the older people holding the cameras up more so, learning how to use the shit. Trying to figure out how it work. Yeah, they, they finally coming in. And that's what I, that was my hardest thing coming in the, as my, I mean, as far as in social media, trying to get people in our group to get, like, this is it. Because they didn't get it. The powers that be didn't get it. The kids got it. But the powers that be didn't get it. So that was the hardest part, I guess, if you want to say what I had in my journey. But other than that, but it didn't matter then either because I already had the younger motherfuckers. The, the, are you on tour now? Mm-hmm. You like it? Well, yeah, you told me you it. like engaging with the people. I love it. I've, to, I've well, been touring most of my career. I know, but that's got to be different. So I want to know what the difference right. is between your comedy tours and these tours. Honestly, it's everything that I always visioned how I wanted my show. Now it's coming full circle with the music. Because even if... if at my shows, it's always, I've always incorporated music with comedy from day one. That's what I was known for, the, the, the nigga that had the music. They used to fuck with me. Comedians used to hate on it. They used to say like, oh, he, he gonna have to have a DJ. He gonna do this. And in comedy, that ain't, he's just a mic in the stand. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? So when I came in the game, it was like, I was the hip hop nigga. You know what I mean? The hip hop nigga to come mm -hmm. in doing this shit. So now my show is more so like that, it's, it's come full circle after 20 years. Okay, I maybe asked the question wrong. Okay. How has, how has this music shit affected your rates? Rates for pussy? <laughs> for pussy? No, period, in, in business. Oh, my money rate. Yeah, nigga, give it to me now. God, yeah, media train well, that no, one. No, no, this nigga be, media train, no, I got no tricks for his train. ass. Ain't no media train, cause the thing is, I've always had money. It's for real. Well, it's like when were you impoverished? Was, impoverished. When I was young, about when I was a kid, but I didn't know I was poor, like because everybody else was poor. Okay. It's like one of them things. Like I've all, I've never chased money. I've never. That's why it was easy for me to go with Empire, because it was man. You got your feet all on the. God damn, man! Oh my god damn! I'm gonna still eat them though. Now. I'm from the south. <laughs> now these was new like a week ago. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's like I've never chased the money. I've never had to. And like I was saying, the reason why. I, it was easy for me not to take the money with from the other labels and go with Empires because I didn't care. I'll, they not okay. gonna give me. 
too much of this interview, you bodying with uh, integrity. So now I got to get. I'm in, dead serious. I got to get, like, get in your parents. Go now. ahead. Give, give me home background. Where, where you come? Why you got all my, this integrity? My family. My my yeah. family's from Bahamas. Who raised you? God damn it. My family's from Bahamas. <laughs> my mama's from Bahamas. My dad is from the streets. You know your daddy? Yeah, yeah, I knew him. I, I knew him. They didn't. Li- my dad didn't live. My dad was a crackhead. He he turned from a crackhead to a dope nigga to a street nigga. Mm-hmm. And that's what made me, when I first started selling dope, I thought selling dope was a good thing because it took my dad off crack. So I thought it was a good thing. So I went from that. And I mean, he went from that to that to that. Then he died from a stroke. Um, That was another thing that happened in New York. I was up here and he died. That's the first time this interview, your legs start shaking when you say that. Why? I don't know. I'm just watching. Uh, But um, yeah, he died. And then my mom died. It had to be about mm, 2003, four. Okay. 2003, four, something like that. Got it, got but it, got it. Yeah, my daddy and, and my mama. I, live, I grew up with my mama, so I kind of grew up. My dad was just a nigga, but I looked up to him because he was the nigga in the hood. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't no good daddy or no shit like that. Dad, but he loved me. He just ain't know how to because he was a daddy. A but y'all had, did y'all have a relationship? Now that I look at it, no. Nah, but it didn't fuck me but up. At the time. It ain't like something, like, you know how people be like, my daddy wasn't there. And that shit ain't do nothing to me. Not that well, I know. How do you know? Because I'm 41 years old now and I don't have no. <laughs> so you're talking to kids. You've been doing too many interviews with kids. I have a life. I got, I'm at, yeah. But you could be 41 and be fucked up. Nah, I ain't fucked up. I That living my best life is really my life. That's how the song came about. I really am living my best life. This I is, don't believe you. Yeah, artists, anything, baby. artists are in the most pain. That's what they so say. You they say comedians and are comedian, the most and they say it about comedians. Ask Charlemagne. So you me. can't say Ask people that really Charlemagne know me. is a liar. Ask anybody that know me. Ask anybody. The good thing about internet, you can Google all the way. If I'm the only, I've been on here the longest, and I've never got fucked over on that shit. It's because you can't. I'm great. <laughs> My life is amazing, bro. It's not no new shit. So you're not miserable inside. There's nothing to be never miserable been. About. Nope. Not there's not some subconscious anger nope. harnessing inside of you internally. Find it. Find it so, out. Get it out, right, Doctor so, so Dr. Joe. No, I'm not a doctor. But Get it out. but would that defy that that would uh, that would make you the exception to what they say about comedians and artists. I count them an exception. Everything. So that's why you got to get the fuck out. You can't yeah, be in here. Like deep about. Yeah. No, they need you to happy? Hear this. We need to hear this. I think more so too because. Everybody feel like you got to go through a struggle to make it. Like, you really don't. Like, people, that's the hard way. Why would you learn? I learn from other people's mistakes. I ain't, there's way too many examples for me to fuck up. If I got, I mean, I'm going to fuck up, but I mean, even when, the thing too, when I do fuck up, I know when I'm wrong, so it don't bother me. Like, I accept consequences, and I understand life as a whole. That's the key to all this shit, understanding. Once you understand, all this shit makes sense. Hmm. I've been saying that a lot recently, too, but I don't ever want to share exactly what I understand with people that don't get it because I'm selfish. You shouldn't. It It ain't for everybody. Yeah. And I learned me and my homeboy was talking about this the other day. Dick Gregory, he used to always say, you ain't qualified. He used to tell everybody they tell me that. And I didn't register. But after once I got to that point mentally, I got it. It's like certain people just ain't qualified. It's not so much they ain't qualified. It's just their minds ain't ready for the shit that that's because sometimes you can go you can go Jim Carrey way Kanye way or you can go the way I go you know what I'm saying like it's hard to to grasp all that shit and realize this do you think you think Jim you said the Jim Carrey way recently someone asked me if I thought Jim Carrey suffered from depression or if I thought he was a psycho no and I didn't think so he not he get it but the thing is I look at somebody like Jim Carrey Jim Carrey get everything but I don't want to live that life. He looks like he's by himself. Well, he has said that he has suffered from depression at some point. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's where that comes from. Because when you buy your, I like being around people, even though I know people are crazy. But I, I just love, I love see, bringing the joy out of people. I really love that shit. So, but I, when you say your way, you say the Kanye way, the Jim Carrey way. Understanding, and the living way. in the understanding of my way is understanding what it is. And understanding that who you are is not just so much of you, it's what you've been molded out of, not just generational and all that. So you're just a reflection of everything that you've seen or become of everything. So I under- we're getting too deep with that part of it because 
that's the part we don't need to go there. <laughs> Yeah, we could probably talk, but we, you can't talk. I understand. Talk. All right. Trust me, I understand. Yeah. Are you following, uh, you in the politics at all? I mean, you I get truth. it. You I get it. Yeah, there we go. No, I get it. And politics to me is, there's no right or wrong. It's just what benefits you. That's all politics is. I was more so concerned with uh, this uh, Mueller report that they've been working on for however many months, and then the president just uh, hired some attorney general to say, hey, all that shit is bullshit. <laughs> oh, for real? I didn't know about that part. President, uh, president doing some wild shit. All of, everybody is. They've been doing, not just the president. Everybody's got to be doing their own shit. Everybody's on their own agenda. You just got to you, you gotta figure out which agenda fits your agenda, and that's what they're doing. See, but my agenda, I'll be honest with you, and more honest than I like to be with cameras rolling, my agenda in, in post-rap and retirement is like a selfless agenda. So Everybody, and, that's a good thing. So I, like, I would like to leave our industry better than I found it for my kids who I think are going to probably do something in entertainment as well. I'm having a hard time circumventing the people that are all about themselves. Nigga, that's what I go through all the time, but... The good thing, like, it's just like with me, I'm the same way, but I see that as people as a whole, not just our culture, just everybody, because in order to get the culture right, you got to get the minds right. It ain't got nothing to do with financial or none of that shit. It's got to do with the hearts and the minds, or the hearts and the minds of, of where you at, because if you feel a certain, if you have a good heart or in a certain type of way, you're not going to even think that type of way. So my agenda in life is to get people to where they're not even thinking about that type of way. And that, I move that way, the way I move in life, and even on my social media, I, I, I'm the, I be the change that I want to see. And that's, and, in order, and that's the only way we're going to do Even in our minds, how we say, they say black people are fucked up from generation. The only way it's going to change is we do it over time. It's, it took that much time to program us like this. It's going to take that much time to, it might take less, because we're actually evolving quicker, whether we see it or not, especially as a people. We evolving quicker, but I see us getting good. I don't see, I, even in the hip hop, I see us good. I see it evolving just like it's supposed to. You think you'll be alive to really see that evolution? I think, you my, think, just I, think I think my legacy will. I think my legacy will. And I think, I don't, it ain't about, it's a self, that's selfless. That's, to me, that's what's selfless. Not, I'm not doing it mm -hmm. to say, all right, I wanna. Now, it'd be cool to get a statue or some shit like that, but I don't do it, it's doing it because. I just feel like, and it's on a, on a bigger scale, like going back to Jim Carrey, it's like, understand, once you understand life, you need something to do. You know what I'm saying? So this is just something, something I'm doing to stay busy till I'm, that, till I'm dead. Oh, shit. <laughs> this guy has a pretty unique perspective on things. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> this is something I'm doing to stay busy until I'm dead. Yeah, and it's, and it's, I feel and like it's that's too, everybody else. What's your sign? Gemini. Oh, you crazy. That's what they say. They say the movie Us is about y'all. It might be. You haven't seen the movie Us, uh -uh. but you know y'all's two-faced. Yeah, I think everybody is. We just more in oh. tune with ours. Oh, okay. No, it's just y'all and Leo's. Maybe Pisces, so. Pisces, maybe. Maybe so. My, my, this is what my um, two sides is. I give a fuck and I don't give a fuck. Those are my two sides. Like, one man I want to... Change the world. Niggas be like, man, let these niggas die. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are my two, my two shits. You can't say let these niggas. Well, I guess you can say that now. Mm -hmm. As a comedian, are you? And not as a comedian, because as, as men, niggas got to worry about this now. Uh, how worried are you about cancel culture? I ask I'm you not, because you've been one of the more blunt, unfiltered. I'm, as a comedian. I think I've reached that point in my career where it's like... Like you put bitch in a hook, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm enamored by it. I did that with my first song that blew up, about buy a girl a drink in the club. Different bitch, time. Was, yeah. Different time true. where that was cool. But see, that was what I was about to say. The difference is, it's like, I think I've got to the point, it's like being a rapper where like Jay-Z's or Snoop Dogg is, they can say what they, they've mastered there, and the, and the world is mastered. It's like... Or another uh, easier analogy is John Rivers or Paul Mooney. Even if you don't agree with what they say, you're like, oh, that's number Paul. That's how he is. And I've got to that point where I could say shit that, that you probably couldn't say is because they, and they understand it's not coming from a place of malice. They just like, he's just stupid or he don't know what he's talking about. 
So they are take it more so. Oh, that's like I just said about Daniel Caesar recently. What, 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 what you said about him? That he's just stupid. He's just young. Oh, yeah. He's young, and, and I get where he's coming from. Me too. I understand where Me he's too. coming from. And I from. fuck with him. But yeah, I understand he's where he's coming from. It's cool. It comes from being picked on your whole life, and then, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I get all that. That's why I said this earlier about wise man. That's why I said earlier about <laughs> understanding where all that comes from, and you're like, oh, that's why he's like that. That's why they like that. And in order to change it, and it's not gonna change unless you, like, you're not gonna change it by saying fuck them. The only way that's what he def- said. No, I mean that's, that's the same what I'm thing saying. He's saying. You gotta befriend it, and you're not. It's hard to hate on somebody that you friends with. If if you're really trying to change them, if you're not trying to change them, fuck it. But if you're really trying to change them. You got to make them understand where you coming from. You get what I'm saying? Make them under- see your world. And then they'll get. Then it's like, once y'all get together, like, all right, that ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's it. So you're not worried about niggas digging up old tweets and just, no. Nope. you don't give a because fuck. Because I don't feel like it came from a place of mess. Now, if some shit I might have said, I was probably tripping. Yes. But I, understand, I know for a fact in my heart, none of it was a place of malice. Whenever I say something, it's, and I come from Florida, we're a lot more harsher than the average people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we really are crazy. So, like, we off like a motherfucker. But, but the, the rest same, of the world agrees. Yeah, I know that. And, and now they, they starting to get it. I honestly don't get how black people can live in Florida. I'll be honest with you. Shit, I do. Tell me. It's beautiful, man. It's the the weather first and foremost. Oh my shit. god! Come on, who you, the fuck wanna too, live in you, this shit? You too deep and wise to tell me about the weather. Right no, now. the weather for real, man. The weather is life. The sun is life. What's the most powerful thing on earth? I mean, in the in the in the galaxy, the sun. Pussy. I need oh. that. The, the sun. The sun. I guess that's just yeah, the that's powerful. the closest part. What's his power? Well, what else is in Dick is powerful too. And you, you, dick control the pussy. Dick is more powerful than pussy. Pause, but I've been saying that for a while. Yeah. What what else incentivizes a black person to be in Florida? Every time the rest of us hear about something happening in Florida, it's some like where do everybody go when they about to die? Florida. You know why? Because it's peace. You want to be someplace where you can have peace. Florida and there's the islands and shit. Y'all like get a different version of the Florida news. Because we, we get. Nah, Florida <laughs> and New York is. What the fuck? To me, Florida, Florida, I say always, Florida and um, the Bay Area. If you want to see how the future going to be as far as evolution and technology, go to the Bay Area. Yes. If you want to see how the hood going to be in 20 years, go to Florida. Oh, yeah? Why you say that? Nigga, everything that's going on now, we've been doing this shit. All this nasty twerk and all. Nigga, this shit been going on with us. It's all it's of us. It's I'm true. one of the people that's been molding this, the whole culture to be ghetto and ignorant and nasty than a motherfucker. Do you think I had a song called Dropping Dick Off. What that mouth do? All this shit is what normal to us. Do. Raw you hoe. All this shit is normal to us. These are great songs. Now, <laughs> 20 years ago, that shit was crazy. Now, it's, y'all laughing. You see what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? saying? Right. Now, y'all laughing at it now. But 20 years ago, the world was like, what the fuck? Right. So that's why I'm saying, like, I've, I was ahead of the game as far as ghetto wise. <laughs> but neighbor. you don't see nothing about you is coming off ghetto. Because I'm 42. I done I grew my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I done I grew my ghetto. You know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a reform nigga. A reform like street street nigga. Like if you you got it's, it's like I don't even know who I was 20. Like if I was like this nigga was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a good guy now. I've grown out of it and I've I, I think I was put in that position to show other people how to grow out of it. You know, and they come from where I come from. Because I'm some like, I do shit that people that's, like, like me, for me scuba diving, me flying planes, actually flying a plane, like, people in our culture never seen that. So I understand that. So by me, you are what you see, and I know that. And we, you are what you saw, so I, I understand that. And by me understanding that, I put that in the culture and, and plant them seeds in there, and hopefully that makes us more like that. Because we should have been in aviation. This is a learning interview well, for you. Well, well, no, we've we've had <laughs> black people in aviation. Yeah, but not in our culture. Yes, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. And you understand what I'm saying, our culture. Yeah. So I mean, it's it wasn't cool to do it. You know what I'm saying? It was. It ain't cool to school with that. It wasn't cool to. I remember I took my homeboy that's from you from New York to the beach. This nigga at the water with his hat on in the water. We scared of water. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why? Yeah. You know, I remember when I first got on social media, and I used fresh. to always be like, black people don't get in water. I grew up in, in the water. Everybody in Florida get in the water. 
So now it's normal. Now, so it's like evolve. We have to evolve. That's a part of evolving in the culture is putting in there, not mad at them because they don't do it, or mad at them because they ain't listening to this, or not doing this, or they not. Even in, in, in the hip hop thing, you can't get mad at them for what they are. They just trying to get on. They just trying to be have fun. Because hip hop now is what it was for white people in the 80s. They just wanted to have fun. They have fun. That's what it is for, for the hood now. They, they ain't nobody listening. But are, but should should the old heads should some of the old heads feel resentment toward that? They feel resentment because hip hop make us realize we ain't old. Nigga, we old. Think about your mama when she was your age. She wasn't doing half the shit we do now. But like we old, but we don't accept it because hip hop make us feel young. But we don't realize the next thing you know we got gray hair and shit. You're like you know. Then then you see your your kid is 18 now. You're like yeah. the fuck. Okay. And you're like you remember when you was just yeah. 18. So hip hop it stunts our growth mentally. You know what I'm saying in a little bit. But at the same time, it's you know that's where we fuck up, fuck up and like why this motherfucker he ain't. But that's really us. That's our seeds. It's true. You know what I'm saying. So it's true. In order to change that, you have to give them something because. Natural, it's natural for us to look up to people. But if the person you look up to ain't doing shit, you ain't even look up to them all. And I, from what I see from the, next gen, from the generation under, they feel resentment because we used to shit on them a lot. So now they got money. Now they got way more money than we had when we was 18. The rappers, they got way more money. Well, that's like they playing with way more money. They like football money now. Yeah, it's they more, playing, much more money. And you can't tell nobody, I don't give a fuck who it is. Any 18 year old, they gonna fuck it up. They gonna fuck up. They, especially with money, like they going they going through the rock and roll era now. That's what the hip hop doing now. So it's they're not doing nothing wrong. I'll be doing the same shit. I did do the same shit. I just posted a picture with me with guns on the private jet 15 years ago with Dante Culpepper. That would have got him out of here now. <laughs> I, un- the, I understand what it is. It's just like when you get old, somehow we get amnesia, like we ain't never did the shit before. It's true. We did all this shit. We listened to stupid shit. It was stupid hip hop back in the day. And like we had picking boogers. That was deep to us. Biz Market, big and, we had stupid songs, but now yeah. we hear stupid songs like that ain't hip hop. Yes, it is. Even though well, but niggas be using Biz Marquee as an example, but I remember Biz Marquee getting clowned. Biz Marquee wasn't He wasn't clowning me because I was a kid. When you were a kid, you accept more. In New, in New York, when it was Ron Kim, KRS, Cool G Rap, and Biz Marquee was talking about your mom's is in my business and mm-hmm. all these gimmicky type of songs, I remember my older brother and some of the street dudes just viewing him differently. But they didn't necessarily view Kid and Play differently. That's the same way with, um, <laughs> that's the same way with, um, damn, I lost my train of thought because I'm high. Um, now I give props to the weed. There you go, goddammit. Right. There you go. What the fuck was I talking about? Shit. <laughs> Dude, oh, oh, well, cool. it's the same thing with now. Like, people shit on these young kids because they say they were in tight pants. But back in the day, with, with like Prince and all of them, now when I look back, I'm grown. I'm like, oh, yeah, they was tripping. But as a kid, when you're young, you accept all that shit. You accept whatever comes to you. And that's what happened. That's what happened with us. We accepted a lot of shit because I was younger. So to me, Biz Markie was saying some real shit because it was simple. That's all rap is. It's simple. It ain't nobody trying to do all that fucking thinking. <laughs> you don't come to think when you want to think. You listen to people you want to think. Like, so you're not gonna have any thought provoking songs. I project. do have thought. I just there we go. There we go. Have, God damn it! But it's you're a gonna peel to y'all it. too. But it's a way to do it. Like living my best life was thinking. You know what I'm saying? It's, you. You live it. Like I, like I said, I, I'm not the best with articulating. Some people do it through the words. Like I tell Killer Mike, he's the best at saying some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like him and Tim, they, good. they good at he's it. He's good. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that later. I'm more of a shower. I'm more of an art. I show through my art. You know what I'm saying? I'm better at that. And I've learned that people follow me more so than they do listen to me. People don't listen. That's what I, and I told at him all. that. People don't listen. At people all. follow. Social media showed that. Think tank. That's what we just follow. That's depressing. No, it ain't. It's depressing to me. I like independent thinkers. I like people that can use their own brain. Man, if power everybody independent thing, we wouldn't have no business. Why is that? Because he wouldn't everybody like be you. Doing their Nobody, own everybody thing. be doing their own thing. Right, it so, comes with everything. So, everything so makes sense. I'm a fan of groupthink. 
I like group thinkers for, for that for that thinking group, but then I can go with these people that ain't thinking. I I like that's why that's what that's what goes back to what I say about Jim Carrey. He might can't deal with these motherfuckers. I can deal with all of them. I use it as entertainment. That's being a Gemini too. We like being entertained a lot. So I I, I tr- the world is my entertainment for me. Like I treat this shit like all entertainment. That's why I laugh at everything that goes on. That's where the fake Karen come from. Where I post online. It's just like I know y'all just upset now. Go ahead, get through it. You know, you can't stop them from not being hurt. Let them be hurt. Because they going to be, you got to let them go through that shit. But I just enjoy watching people bump their head through life. It's fun. Yeah, because it's, it's like, like, like look, he don't even see where this going. Boom, 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 boom. No. It's a timeline. I know. They don't see it. Just earlier, just not too long ago, you were talking about that resentment that maybe some of the OGs have to the young rappers and vice versa. But earlier, you and I were talking about the resentment that exists between Atlanta and New York. Or down south. Down south. York, not Atlanta and New York. Mm-hmm. Because of how poorly New York treated everyone else when we were in control of shit. Mm-hmm. And now that we're not in control of shit. I've never, you know what, I always knew, and this is the reason why I've always had money and been successful as far as in some type of... I've always knew there was way more country cities than there were cities. And so I always New knew. New York didn't know. N- most people still don't. We didn't know. People that. don't realize there's only like five or six big cities. The rest of this shit country. It is country. The rest of this shit country. People like Boosie will be a millionaires forever. There's always gonna be country niggas. It's true. And I've always known that. I've always knew that. Always, I guess they call it the Chitlin Circuit, but you can live with it. And so I always that. knew. And I've always made money like that. So I never cared about New York, LA. I never gave a fuck. I went to LA because cause I did live in LA for a while because people, the people that I did look up to, they were like, you gotta go to LA. That's the only way you're gonna get on. So I tried it. And then Did it work? Hell, I remember one day I was yeah, coming. Go. I was on um, I came out there with Sergio Entertainment, because Sergio Entertainment, he was the first person to give me a shot as far as the industry. Got it. So he was like, you gotta go out to LA, I got a show. It was right before Dave Chappelle's show came out. He had a sketch show. And his sketch show was on Fox and all that shit. And I used to go up there. But it was his world. It really wasn't my world. It was his world. So I was out there. And I remember going home. And I gave up everything. Streets, all that shit. And I was like, man, I am three. And I was popping in Atlanta and Florida. But I was nobody out here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I'm 3,000 miles away chasing a fucking dream. This shit is childish. I'm going back home. And I went home and I was like, I'm going to just go with who like me. And I'm going to build off that. I'm going to build off that and create that. And that's what I did. And it was around the time when social media and all that shit started. Mm. That's when I realized all that shit. I ain't like, I ain't doing that that way. I'm like, that shit too fake. It's, I didn't like that way. I didn't like to, I like ha- having control of my shit and doing my way. I was like, they going to come to me. And I remember they used to always say, Hollywood don't come to you. I was like, they going to come to me. And they did. I feel like you and Sean, man, would have done more together by now. We do. We we do shit. All our shit starts a friendship too. Like we just we don't have to do shit. We do it because we want to do it. Like we don't. He from day wouldn't one. Wouldn't it make sense? We do shit. We. I don't know. Well, what do we want us to do? We can, but I feel like we doing our thing. He doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. Like. Shit, if you ask anything, we really the gatekeepers. We can make shit happen. Like, I don't, I just don't, I feel like we're doing our thing. If we, unless we want us to do shit together. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. Y'all never attempted that? Y'all never we tried did. it? We did, State of the Union. We did. That shit created everybody that's doing their shit now. You know, was, we did, we do shit. We, and careers ain't over with neither. Like, we do <laughs> shit. Like, I think we, we, we that's another thing. We got to stop rushing shit so much. Shit don't happen. I never rush my shit. This shit happens. As long as you're doing something. You just said State of the Union has started all this other shit. Do you have any do you have any thoughts on the current current wave of all these different types of forms of content I told you that's I love coming it. out every it's, other it's, second? It's the way of the world now. It's like everything is it's brought us together and when used right, it can change the world. When used wrong, it's just like anything else. You know? You seem like you might be good to have on this hip hop committee I'm trying to come up with where we, where, where we start fixing shit. <laughs> fixing shit. But everybody I, I spoke to in Atlanta is getting too much money that they don't want to be a part of it. They said, we getting money and we're not disrupting none of that. I don't know. I mean, I just like to. But you friends with T.I. who's like the mayor of hip hop. Uh-huh. 
So I, I, y'all might be useful in this in this movement to start rearranging the infrastructure. I feel like we are doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing my part in the ecosystem. You doing your part. I feel like you're doing a good part of the ecosystem. It's power in numbers. It's power changing lives. We all doing lives. our own thing, just like we said earlier. It's power in changing lives. I want to change the infrastructure. I feel like you can't change it. Like I told you, you can't change the infrastructure until you change this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like people that's changing everything they're doing, but in my thing, I feel like my purpose is to get your mind right for when you get that shit right. Because you can have all that shit there, but if your shit ain't right here, are you a five percenter? No. Damn, everything you're saying is just what my fucking cousin was saying last night. And he's the most I'm more of a, in the world. I'm more into like Buddhism and shit like that. Okay. I believe in all religions. I believe all that shit makes sense. I think it's all a well, evolution you, of. So you don't subscribe to one in particular. I understand it all. I think the most. I think the most powerful one, the one that humans need, is Islam. But. That shit got too many rules for me, so I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> like, I, but I get it. I, he, the average person, they need them rules. Because if you follow them rules, you ain't going to bump into the bullshit. And they make them rules for certain reasons. And it's the biggest religion in the world, you know? I'm just learning shit. I'm just listening. I know. Fuck out of it. <laughs> this is all purpose. This ain't even funny. No, this I had you. this. I had this. No, this is the three hour talk I had last night with my cousin. You don't know him, so that ain't gonna matter. But I know it don't. It's all in the universe. I, but that's you. what he was saying. He was saying his point is that if we were following the book of the Almighty God, we would be in tune with our spirituality. And once we're in tune with our spirituality, we would get what we are supposed to get. Something what do you, like, you don't have to, like I get what you're saying because a lot of people use that that's still going back to using for selfless you're doing all that because you want something back and that's selfish no matter how you like to say I'm going to do I'm going to give this because I want Carmen to come back I'm a good person you don't do it for that you just do it because that's what you feel in your heart because who's it's not going to come back it's like you can be the best rapper in the world that don't mean you're going to make it you know what I'm saying so if you're doing it for that you're not going to like you're going to still be hurt even when you do make it well what do you want out of music I'm not doing it for the music. This is just another well, way to facilitate well, that's why I say this joy want. that I got in me to everybody else. To give the same, I don't like to use religion, but whatever I, my piece or whatever made me who I am, I feel like if I instilled that in everybody in the world, it should be a better place. See, that's like a blanket, perfect PC answer. All that's right, the real what, answer. What do you it have, sounds good. So, it sounds great. What do you have to say to the artist that maybe feels like Lil Duvall shouldn't be in it because he just talking about he got joy to express. I feel like, well, give me something, give them something else that's go to us besides mine because evidently you ain't giving it. You ain't doing whatever it is. So we could, I don't care about what they think. Like, they, it's not going to stop with this guy going. This shit bigger than whatever you can control. You know what I'm saying? So it don't. You, I only bring it up because during this, you know, during this conversation, you know, I can hear all the integrity in you but as of late there's been this ongoing conversation about some of the newer acts i.e uh blueface uh nba young boy cardi it's been a a, a, fl a slew of them to come out and say listen i'm here to get this money mm -hmm. that's it they i don't, young, give, they I don't give a fuck that. about all that lyricism culture whatever y'all did before me all of that's cool i got a family to feed i come from the bottom i'm getting money that's economics that's what got them like that they come from nothing if you come from nothing, and it's like the only thing that matters, and the, the what the hip hop agenda been pushing: get money, get money, get money. And the, the, our culture do need that because we haven't. Like if you seen the Killer Mike show, you realize mm -hmm. we don't, we not in control of nothing. So I get yes. that part of it, and they do need to push that, and they might fuck up trying to do that. But in the big scheme of things, in the ecosystem, our culture need a little bit of that business mindset to get to where. We can have our own shit like the Asians or like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So I get that part of it. And they're not wrong for feeling like that. But they got to, for their own sake, they got to, because later on it's going to come back, to, I mean, not to come, but the eco part of it going to come back around and yes. hurt them. Yeah. But at the same time, if they grab it, but it's still going to work out for, for the whole culture in general. If you look at, that's how I look at it. Like, like in life, even the bad, something good gonna come out of it. Now, whether you're gonna reap the benefits or the, the, 
even in your good, you might, re- you might do something good. You know how people just doing shit? Like I see people right now, they doing all the shit look good. And it's like, oh, this person a good person. This person this, that, whatever. Yeah, and, and the world gonna reap the benefits of it, but you not going to. Your soul not going to. They still, you ever see somebody do all of this and they still unhappy in their soul? Yes. Why? Because they not doing it genuinely. That's not coming from, so that's where they fuck. They not going, they not going to reap the benefits of being, of the joy that they give in the world. You get what I'm saying? Like you might put out great music. That's just like me putting out, that's why you say, it say artists are most unhappy. Because they put out all this shit changing the world, but they still not happy inside because it didn't come from, it came from a place of hurt or whatever they going through. So it's the same thing in life. Your entertainment, your culture, all that shit balls in how you wait, live your life. No, I get it. The entertainment is just something to entertain us while we did, till we did, like I said. We just oh. busy, we just doing shit to be busy. None of this shit matters. I agree. <laughs> and that's what my cousin said too. It don't. You a Muslim. No, I mean, <laughs> all this shit is, even in Christianity, people give Christianity, but it's all built out of love. At the end of the day, they do it out of love. So it's now how people take it and just like hip hop, how people take it and run with it and fuck it up. It's in everything. It's in everything. It's all an analogy of the same shit. It just evolved into something else. Just like music. Music evolved from seven, 12 notes or some shit. How many notes is in, in the, the, it's just like 12 so notes. Of, and all this long. shit comes from that. Mm-hmm. The, average, the average comedian would know that, would it? Well, since your mind is of this level of depth, <laughs> how long do you think America will be here? America is in the beginning stages of, of their culture. We are so far behind. Like, if you, you've been out of the country and other places, mm-hmm. this is the newest cu- cu- country in the world. So we just knew. We had the new part of it. We, and if you understand that, you can mold it the way you want it to go. You know, so I understand it, and and I feel like we just had the new part of it. It's gonna always be fucked up shit and everywhere. Like now, this is the only place in the world where the, no, a poor person can become a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Like there's nowhere else that I know of that can do that. So now, so and it's getting small, farther and farther away. So if you understand that now, you would know. Well, I need to get this shit. And that's why I say go back to we need to get this money for when that shit get to where you can't do it no more. We ain't there. We looking like South Africa, where we in, in, in the power, you know what I'm saying? And the good thing, and that's where that comes in with me, I, I don't want to be like South Africa where we shitting on the, the white folk, because I don't want to shit on them. That's know? what I told my cousin. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but that's where it comes from, but that, they're not wrong for being like, because they've been going through it so much, but nobody like me was pushing the good part in there. So you need shit like this, like people like me that's pushing that good, so when we do get in there, we don't do the same thing that we hated that they did to us. I target. The, the little niggas that I appreciate, mm-hmm. the little niggas that I feel like I can maybe learn something from, mm-hmm. the little niggas I feel like are, are adding. I try to ignore the little niggas that are label manufactured. I get what you're saying, yeah. And that just happens to be a lot of that today. So like, we was talking about Kodak. I fuck with Kodak, right. musically. Right. Uh, all the babies I fuck with. Lil Baby, The Baby, mm-hmm. I, fuck with, I fuck with Gunna. There's a few young niggas I fuck with. Who you like lyrically out of the young hood? Not, not like, I don't want you to say the cliche J. Cole's or... Oh, no. All the people I'm naming are mm-hmm. people I appreciate lyrically. Oh, okay, okay. Out of, out of, the, out of the newer crop. Yeah, right. Uh, anytime I hear Baby, it's funny. Me and my mom was just having a conversation because somehow my mom be liking like these young nigga songs. Mm-hmm. And my mom is... 60 plus. So mm-hmm. the last young nigga song she liked was the Sheck West song. I mean, oh no, not Sheck West. Fucking uh, Juice World over mm-hmm. the uh, Sting sample. Yeah, yeah. And we that's had, why she like it. That's, what, that's one of the things why, why um, Smile Bitch work is because it brought that old, yeah, the old yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like it as something for the, because think about it. Ain't nobody hit that lane. Because people don't target. Because you know that. why? Because it ain't cool to be old. That's why yeah. I made it back cool. Well, I try, that's my whole thing. Like, they think we about to die soon. They, but we, we are in their world. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you just going to leave us hanging? Like we missed that. Like people left that gap open because of hip hop. Because you know how our parents went to go see Frankie Beverly and Maze and mm-hmm. shit like that there? That's us now. That's we true. can still, that's why shit like the Millennium Tour and all that bullshit working. 
it's because that younger group, they grew up on them. And that's where, and when somebody used that song, like they doing it now in hip hop now, they using all the old school shit. If you think about all that shit, all Diddy shit was all old music. That's true. That did, and so it's the same thing I did with Smile Bitches. They're old incorporated with the new and the mix and, the, and it's the vibe of the young, the young vibe. So everybody love it. And that's the same thing. Yeah. That's why she liked that Juice World because he used old samples and put it in there and it's it, all the magnet music is like, that's why Islam don't use that shit in, in, in their churches and stuff because you can manipulate people with music. It's in you, like it's powerful. Well, she said, she said the content was relatable. Mm -hmm. And she said everybody, all ages, could relate to a breakup. Yeah. And I said, I don't give a fuck because that song is trash. Uh -huh. So the next song, that was our argument. Right, so right, the right. next song she liked was uh, Drip. Mm -hmm. And I love that song. Drip so hard, don't stand too close. Oh my God, oh my God, that's my shit. Mm -hmm. So that's her shit too, but she don't understand one word they're saying. So she is blown away by that's, the fact that I can understand every word. And oh, I said, Ma, that's, those are the young dudes that I enjoy. Like, it she said like, she likes them too? She, she likes loves them. that song. Loves that goes that back song. to what I said about the power of the music. Loves that song. Like some, you, ever had, you ever had a song that, that blew and there's no reason? No, I haven't had it. <laughs> no, I mean, not you and Jimmy, but all right. You ever, <laughs> you ever, hey, don't be laughing too hard, goddamn. I had to. The you ever heard something. the song? You're like, why is this song... Like so popular. Like, yes, the fucking Juice World song. God you know what song was kind of like that? And I just didn't, I felt the energy, it was the energy, but it didn't like, to me it wasn't a hit, but it was a hit. Something like Bring the Pain, Method Man. Method Man? Method Man, like it was the energy, but it really wasn't like a, your cliche of what a song's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? It just flow or like, or like, huh? Or like, um, it's like certain songs, you can't it just have some type of melody in there or something that attracts us in them 12 notes. But that was kind of what I perceived to have been the formula back then. Like throughout the 90s, you get away with dropping the single that's unconventional, that's that's uh, more like an album cut, that's the chorus is probably harder to identify than today, like Bring the Pain. Yeah. Bring the Pain would be probably an abnormal, so they wouldn't do that today. They wouldn't do they that wouldn't back do it then today. either though. Back then it was it, it was all it was even worse back then because back then all you had was radio, so you had to follow the format or spend some money. It was way worse. It's easier now. Yeah, but the acts on the radio back then and the time. So that's what uh, Bring the Pain is. What ninety two, ninety three. That's Illmatic. That's you think Bring the Pain was their first that's single? That's Tribe Call Quest. That's Souls of Mischief. That's Diggable Planets. All of that shit is like unconventional shit. But it wasn't their first, like most of the time they didn't push it out there, it just organically happened. Well that's what I'm saying, but that's what they was doing in New York. Like Raucous was pushing that out, Loud was pushing that out, like certain of the, certain New, right, right, York, right, right. New York labels was pushing out that type of shit. Now and it probably struck y'all. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And most songs, like most New York shit, we wasn't feeling it, but certain ones it just got us. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bring the Pain wouldn't be no song that be, that's, that's normally be popping in the South. But in the South, the shit was rocking. So it's, it's something in there that we can't control in our spirits and our, you know how the moon makes certain shit happen? The same shit with music. It do the same thing. It's like certain sounds you just automatically click on. It's just certain. Is that, is that, that might be your answer to my next question. How, how can it, how, as an Atlanta resident, how should a New York act or up north act market to y'all or appeal to y'all? They already doing it. Y'all already southern now. If you, most of that music is sound. They got the hard. I don't beat. count them niggas as New Yorkers. Shit, doing they the ones shit. winning. You might as well. Like I mean, all all music sound the same. I mean, it's it's all it's not regional no more. There is a little bit, but not as regional as it used to be. It's because the internet brought us together. Certain shit brought us together to where. Is you Atlanta is Atlanta still in that in that bunch that you saying? Like, because I, I feel like Atlanta maybe was maybe the last place that regional shit still was popping and then went mainstream. I think Atlanta's got everybody sounding like Atlanta and Florida. It's a mix between both of us and the, the uh, Louisiana sound for the most part. Yeah. It's all blended in everybody music now. And my bad in Memphis. Yeah, man. Just the South, all them four little spots like that, it's all influenced everything else in music. And what's they still, they got their own thing. West Coast gonna always have that, you know, that West Coast yeah, shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, 
as far as just any, you put any song that I can hear one of them four cities in there. Me personally, I can't because I've heard millions of songs. Is it important for older older dudes to appeal to appeal and market to younger dudes? No. Why would you care? Like this, you should. So we don't have to. You don't have to. Like I okay. wouldn't. Like you, you want your music to reach everybody. But at the same time, you don't force it on. Like I don't, you don't, I don't go in the studio and like, oh, this is gonna be good for the young man. Oh, I want to make it something. To me, that's corny to me. You just do what you feel. Like if I'm who I am, it's like a, a, being a comedian. I can't bomb it for myself. You know what I'm saying? They might not laugh, but when you yourself, it works. It just naturally works for me. You know what I'm saying? The same thing in music. Like the music works because it's a part of me. Even if somebody gave me a song, I'm gonna rewrite it or make it. To where it fits me, because otherwise it ain't gonna work. I ain't gonna be able to sell it. I ain't gonna be able to perform it or nothing. So it has to make for me. It has to make sense. It has to fit me. That makes sense. I feel like the Ty Dollar record fits you. Yeah, because I, I that, when I said that, I was like, I want to make. A, I said I'm. A, I want a song where I can. It's the parties. Everybody say I'm a vibe. I'm this, that, whatever. Mm -hmm. I need a party like that, and they say I'm the energy. The party's over here. Come on, I told them I want to. I want a feel good song from this one I told um, RL, because RL the one wrote it um, from Next. So I was like, I want a song. I always knew too, I always had people in the back of my head. You wrote the Ty Dollar record? Yeah. Who you thought wrote the Ty? <laughs> See, nah, Ty, I hit Ty up. I was like, Ty be perfect on this song. You know what I mean? I was like, RL's in Atlanta? Huh? Is RL in Atlanta? Yeah, he living in Atlanta. Got it. Yeah, and it was this other young guy, um, he a producer or whatever. Young kid from from Birmingham, so I I always knew Ariel had songs and st I mean can make songs and shit like that. Then I always knew to keep my women away from Ariel. <laughs> yeah, probably I come, so. from, I come from that generation. Probably so, but that's all them R and B motherfuckers from the '90s and early 2000s. Yeah, but he was light skinned with his shirt open. Talking that nigga about ain't light skinned. Nigga my, you light skinned, nigga. That nigga my color. Ariel is light skinned '99. Nah, he just the <laughs> same with his I shirt. I don't know off. what darkness, darkening shit he done went and got. But yeah, I told him what I wanted, and then he get, he he he, he um, played the song for me. And when I heard the vibe of it, I just knew all I gotta do is do a little twinkling up, put the Duval in there, and it's a hit. And that's what happened. And I do that with anything I get from somebody else. Like I can make, I can honestly do all that shit myself. I'm just lazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I just know what I need. It's like if some niggas they like engineering all day, get that nigga to do that. Get that nigga. I don't mind spreading the money. I don't care about that part of it because. It is what it is. Right? That don't matter to me. I care about getting the the music, the, the vibe I'm trying to get out there. So if I know you good at writing, I know you good at that. And then once I get out, I can take it and flip it and make it. So after, so when, once you do all of that and the song is complete, is there? Any, how do you confirm that it's a vibe? Because I can. If, or if is it I just see a my, few, if, like while I'm doing it, I'm already. It's my life. It's like a rap. Like you know, you be like. Like when you write raps or videos, like even when I'm doing the song, I'm already envisioning the video, I envision mm -hmm. this, I envision, because I'm thinking about my life. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, it's easy when it's you. It's really me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's really, I'm really a goddamn, I'm every man, damn it. I really know, I've done everything, I understand everything, and, and the older people appreciate it because I'm talking about something that they understand. Like they understand my vibe, and the younger people feel it because of the energy. You know what I'm saying? Because of the this is. They look at me like that's what I want to be like when I'm old. I don't want to be like this motherfucker. I want to be cool like that. They, he look like he having a good time. You get it's what true. I'm saying? It's true. Where you look at this motherfucker, this motherfucker looks stu stubborn. He's stuck in his. I don't want to be that motherfucker. So I give them something to look at when they get this age. Do you do you think do you think that um, I'm asking you as a comic now? Do you think that? Uh, Kevin Hart's Oscar approach was the correct one? I think he gave a fuck too much. I told him that. he looked like that, right? I, like he, I mean, but I've never, I'm one nigga that's never been envious of his career. I've always looked at it like, I don't want that. That shit look like work. I don't do this no, shit to work, work hard. It you know what I'm saying? Work. Like, now him, he, he does, like, that's what he, he's a workaholic. He likes that shit. Me personally, I don't want to, I don't do that. And like, when I see him, so I'm like, this nigga look tired. Like, he look like, this shit is tearing him to death. He probably don't feel it. So that's not a trade that you would make? No. I never did. I could have been there. I could have been there made a lot more money, get a lot more famous, but I like to be in control. I like to do what I want to do, when I want to do. Which is? What the fuck I want to do. Which if I want to put a song out, I put a song out. If I want to do shit, 
What made me who I am is not what I did, it's what I didn't do. And that's what, a lot of shit I just didn't do. I just didn't see, I didn't want to do. I didn't want to go down that route. Even like something like with y'all, the love and hip hop. They asked me to do that when they first got, I didn't want to do it. I just didn't, now when I'm looking back, I probably should have did Man, something. I, I didn't want to do it this last time, but. I didn't want to do it. I just didn't see, and, <laughs> I, and I didn't need to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't, I need, didn't need to do it this I didn't last need time. to do it from Thanks. day one. I always knew. I can control my shit. Well, now, just shut it. the fuck up. You just didn't do it because you ain't want to put your girl on the screen. That too. I never put there my girl on the God screen. There we go, Goddamn. Stop standing wise. That's all <laughs> that. I, no, I didn't, I didn't like the way that shit. That, it got a lot more desensitized now, but back yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was like, it was like, why would I do this? Like, it was like either be a reality show or be a movie star. Why the fuck would <laughs> I do this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not finna sell short for this. I mean, for, sell this short for this shit. No. It didn't make sense to me, you know what I'm saying? I so, get it. you know, I've always been in a position to turn down shit. That's why I say I've never been broke. I've never been struggling. I've been in a position to where I can say no to shit. Some people they can't, and I understand why. I understand why some people be on them show on the shows like that is because shit. If you ain't got nothing else, I mean, this is a platform at that point, at that moment. But I didn't need it, so I didn't do it. Most of the people, most of the older people, with this perspective of you know. I'm not going to be a workaholic. I'm not going to just give all of my time to my profession. Most people feel like that because they want to spend time with their families. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be there to watch their kids grow up. Some of the shit I do that, that they anyway. Might, that, they, that they might. How many kids you got? One. That's it. How old? Eleven. I had one daughter, and that's it. And it's hard. I I really want more kids, but I ain't got time for it. It's hard raising even one kid being on the road and living living this lifestyle. The good thing, social media and the, and and um, evolution helped with FaceTime and all that. But could you imagine being an entertainer back in the day with no form? They hear from you months. Oh, that's what happened. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's but how now, I raised my first kid. That's what I'm saying. So now it's different. So it's helped me out a lot with technology and everything and evolution. But but. For the most part, yeah, I'm, I do all that with my family. I'm, I'm with my family. If you follow my social media, my social media is really my life. My social, it's like a sitcom. I treat my shit like a, like a network. You show us the bad stuff? I ain't got no bad shit. <laughs> my life is amazing, bro. Like, I ain't got no bad shit. You don't fight with your girl about some of your, some, some of the, your career decisions? No, about, my about, how lady, you, about how your time is spent? I don't, how I don't your money with, is spent? But I don't fuck with nobody that... I don't fuck with people that's in this industry like that, and I fuck with people that understand. And then, and I've evolved to most of the people like my last old lady. She watched me too, so she understand me too. You know what I'm saying? She knew what she was getting into before she got. The last old lady, so you bounce around. Just like my in in social media time, how they look at it. Probably about <laughs> fourth old lady. I loved them all, you okay. know, I until it. I didn't. You know? I understand. <laughs> I understand. Let's talk about real estate. Mm -hmm. I come off as a nigga that know all about real estate. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. You 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 come off a lot wiser than I I I know from uh, persona. That's because you read. Me Why are you doing that? Now I don't I don't I make it a business to read people. That's not true. I don't read niggas. I'm not one of the niggas that think I could see a few things with somebody and mm -hmm. know them, know what they would be like. I don't mm -hmm. assume. I try not to assume shit. Mm -hmm. So. Well, evidently you assume because you assume that I wasn't this. No, no, I don't assume that you're not that. When I meet niggas and see that they're this, my new question be, well, why are they not showcasing this? I do. That's why I'm able to do what I do. I do ch show this. You, you, think, just, you think all your fan base knows this? Yes, my fan base. Now, people that ain't my fan base. They, my, I well, you're in a space now where, let's see, no, you can't do that. You can't say that. You can't say that no more. What? Yes, I can, because I don't change. When this shit took me to this part, I've never changed. I stayed like this, because I know, like, when you try to be, like, because if, I could have been smile, bitch, been the good, good guy type of guy, and I am the good guy, but at the same time, I'm still a nigga. I still do shit, I still smoke, I still fuck bitches, I still do all types of shit. So I, I show them everything so you won't be on that, oh man, I thought, no, nah, you can't burn me because so I am who I am. We can't, box, we can't put Lil Duvall in any type of box. You can't, cause I, I, and it ain't even, I did it like I was trying to do it. It's, 
I'm 41. I've lived life. I've done anything you can ever think of. You got stepdaddy? No. I did all this on my, like, I didn't have nobody. <laughs> I didn't watch nobody. You got a stepdaddy. I didn't watch. You know what I learned? I learned from life. I always paid attention. I think that's what made me good at comedy. I'm an observer. I pay attention. I know I can pay attention and understand. And the more I seen, the less, the less I knew. And the more, I tell people this all the time. I didn't realize, I didn't start getting smart until I realized how stupid I was. When you realize how dumb you is, then you can go up and then you can elevate because now you're trying to learn. When people get stumped because they think they don't learn. So I've always paid attention. I've always learned and observed and understood and had a good sense of trying to make shit how I wanted to be. I took it for what it was. Did you see the R. Kelly doc? Yeah, that's all right. Did you see the Gayle King R. Kelly interview? Yeah, who didn't? <laughs> React to it. What'd you think? I thought he shouldn't have did this shit like everybody else. Like, I <laughs> no, was his just... publicist didn't think that. His well, publicist his... thought that was a fine job that he did. Evidently, he must have had that put for a long time because he had a public before they would have been told him to get the hell out of the country. Like, there's no reason for you. You had 20 years. You have been going through this shit for 20 years. Evidently, something, you ain't in our society mentally because mentally this is crazy to, to the average person. You know what I'm saying? But he, he's, he get what he's supposed to get, man. We are with you as part of all that shit. He's been doing but do, it. But do you think there's a separation between uh, art and the artist? As far as what? As far that's, as? That's our fault. That's your fault. That's our fault if we take, like you think, only in our culture do we have to know everything about a person. We don't know what Sean Penn doing right now. We don't know what Brad Pitt doing right now. But we want to know what Joe Budden and his old lady eating. We want to know what this motherfucker, that's why I don't do it. I don't, because to me, I don't care about you. I don't need you. I don't need to use my life to make who I am great. You know what I'm saying? Most people do that. As, you see these YouTube, they have couples and all that shit that they build this and that with them. Mm -hmm. That's the way of life now. But I don't, I feel like I'm talented enough to, I give people so much other shit to give a fuck about. They don't care about this shit like that. that. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that's just how we do. And then, then when you find out this person who, ain't what you thought they was because you felt you fell for that. You didn't fall for his music. You didn't fall for this. You thought he was a, a god. That's why we made you. That's why you, even in, in any religion, you can't make them human-like because if you do, he fucks up. Humans fuck up. Martin Luther King fucked up, but that don't mean he wasn't no great man. Mm -hmm. We all, it's just human. But, and that's why they didn't want to tell everything like that because we would have shit it on. So you still are listening to Trapped in the Closet. Uh-uh. I ain't listen to none of that shit. Okay. I ain't listen to none of that shit. I mean, and if I did, I ain't gonna tell you. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. That's smart. Stay woke. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the did you watch the uh, MJ shit? Mm-hmm. Same thoughts. MJ ain't do that shit. That's my thought on that. You don't think he fucked Wade? I think MJ is just a kid, man. I think to me, with Wade, I don't know what he did, honestly. I wasn't in there. And the man dead, so I don't know why we judging him, because ain't that's what God do? Ain't he in heaven now? Or uh, wherever he at? So if he was gonna get judged, let him do it. But the only thing with the Wade thing, he he's known to lie about something already. He was good at it at 12. How we know he ain't lying now? Stay with me. Yeah. Yeah, you right. What about the other little kid? I don't know. Both of them little lying ass niggas? I don't know, bro, but at that time, and it was a different times too, man. Like they blame the parents too, but if y'all understood Michael Jackson was a god then, you would have let your kid hang with Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, nigga, anybody would have hung with motherfucking Michael Jackson. It's Michael motherfucking Jackson. Like this is just imagine Michael Jackson sitting there on your motherfucking couch in a regular house at that time. That's like God sitting there. Like, I got God right here, bro. Like God. So it was a different time, so you we was all fucked up. Even in the 90s with how we grew up, we was fucked up. I realized hip hop fucked us up a lot more than we want to accept. I agree with that. Like we way. really got fucked up. So we, like the even dog and women and all this shit, like mm -hmm. even like when you listen to music, niggas was raping bitches on the music mm -hmm. and all that. But it was normal to us. So we, 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 if anything, hip hop was my pop. So we grew up on this shit. So what you, this a whole generation of people that didn't know no better. Actually, I'm glad you said that. Earlier you brought up how old niggas are still maneuvering out here. You brought up the Millennium Tour that B2K is on. Do you think that Raz B should be on a tour at all? If that would happen to him, no. Nah. What do you mean if? 
I mean, if that's what happened to him. I don't know, because I wasn't there when he got his dick, when the nigga dicked him down, so I don't know. But but if that's what happened. But he said that's what happened. I mean, I realized, you know what I And no one's refuted it. I ain't gonna front, I realized there's a lot of that shit going on. I didn't, I'm gonna be honest, I was naive to knowing how many people was getting molested. I didn't realize that shit was going on. Even when I was young, I didn't realize people around us was getting fucked with that Mm -hmm. much. So I was kind of ignorant to the fact, and to to this day, I still can't picture nobody doing something that. Well, that's exactly why I brought this question up about Raz B. Because he's probably one of the rare cases that we have of uh, a young male being sexually abused by another male. Yet it seems like the culture doesn't treat that with the sensitivity that they do as women who are sexually abused. And every time I'm looking at him on this tour, like it looked like he's going through something. Man, he's storming I it's, off it's stage. All that. We- he's saying, fuck y'all, I'm afraid. Like Psychologically, maybe he's... I mean, you on the road, you've been on the road, you mm-hmm. in this, you know what comes with the road. I don't know what comes with that. Like, I you know never, what comes with the road. You yeah, know, but I'm you talking know about, but living. he's got, if, what he's saying, he's got really fucked with molest as a kid. Yeah. Like, that there, I can't imagine. Like, one thing, I, the older I got, I was more, it made me more desensitized to people, other people. Like, in my mind, I thought everybody thought like me. Like I said, I grew up kind of tough mentally, like, I don't, a lot of stuff don't bother me. So in my mind, I always thought, why are they tripping? Like, what is this? So now I'm starting, when I get older, I'm starting to hear these stories with all that. Psychologically, they was fucked up from the get-go. So now I'm more sensitive on, like, like probably five, 10 years ago, I would have been fucking with Raz B and all, but now I feel like, damn, they probably really fucked this little boy head up. 100%. But like, I don't, so I can't, I'm still learning with that shit. I'm still like, I don't even know how to talk. Like, I don't even want to say, I feel bad for him now. I don't even want to say that because he might watch, watch this shit and it might hurt him. Like, I feel bad, like, even, like, I don't want to fuck this look, this boy head up because he really fucked up. Like, so, all right, so let's take it off Raz B. Uh, Terry Crews. What, what are your thoughts on Terry Crews and the mission that he's been on for? I don't know no thought because all this shit is, it's like even with girls coming out. Like, you don't know who's, like, it's a, it's a movement now. So some of it's true, some of it ain't. I don't know which one it is. So it's like, I don't place judgment until I can understand it all. Otherwise, we just saying shit. And none of us should until, unless you was in that room, there, or this, that, whatever, and it might have fucked me. I don't know, bro. See, that's my, that was my exact response on our Florida hip-hop conversation where you were saying, you don't understand how I can feel like that. So let's talk about it now. No, nah, that ain't nothing like that. Cause that there's I was saying, people. I don't know. No, nah, that, that, that's, that's a whole, totally different conversation. Cause that there's fucking with people and how they're going to grow up and be as a villain in life. You see what I'm saying? That there's just shit we doing where we bored, just making culture. But I'm talking about this is changing people, who they are as a person. You are already, it's like your kid right there, you already plant, you could plant seeds in somebody and make them something that can fuck them up for life. That ain't right, that ain't the same as this hip hop shit, this southern northern shit. Okay, well let's get back to hip hop and off of Terry Crews and Raz B. <laughs> Raz B shouldn't be on the road though. Hey man, he might I, gotta be on that. the road. And it's the life, like niggas struggling out here, man. Niggas ain't getting money, man. People gotta do what they gotta do. You don't do. think there's something wrong with you don't think there's something wrong with that all of these conversations. So what are you gonna do? This whole conversation been what about do? how all the money had all the money is now in hip hop. Yeah, but that's he came in the time when it wasn't. He got what it was. So all right, so what's his alternative? Exactly. Like you're talking about some shit we can't change. So you gotta let that shit do what it do and hope for the best. That's some shit you got to pray about, cause you don't. It's already to the point to where us talking about it ain't gonna make no difference. So we really just spilling more of that into it. That's why I don't like to touch on certain shit like that. Not cause I give a fuck that like it's gonna make me look bad. It's just cause I know the power that it can affect everything. You believe in Illuminati? I used to didn't, but I wouldn't call it Illuminati. But <laughs> I used to didn't. <laughs> yeah, but now once you get to a certain. Level, you're like, oh, this shit real. This shit is really real. And it's not so much Illuminati, it's just 
the powers that be. The powers that be. It's just like you were powers to be in a certain level. Certain people are, but some people are just in there. You know what I'm saying? And you hope that the people that's in there are doing it for the benefit of the people. But most of them ain't. Because if it's about money, now I'm trying to tell you, when money come in the room, love go out. You know what I'm saying? That shit go out, so. That's depression. It is if you if you in there for that money. But if you ain't. I'm not. I'm not neither. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, mean, I'm going to get my money. Don't get it twisted. Like, money is, to me, money has never been hard for me to get. So I've never had a problem. I've never, like, had to chase it. So I don't understand the mentality of everybody else chasing it. So I've, and I've always got it. Everybody don't do it like, I mean, there's some people did the same shit I did and can't get no money worth shit. You know, we at that age now. You just getting that age. But you're going to get to an age where the, your peers and the people your age, that's when, I didn't understand suicide till I got to this age. And now I'm understanding that because I'm seeing people that I came up with and I'm watching them and I'm looking at where they at now. And as a man, it's hard being a man when nobody give a fuck about you no more. And if you ain't where you're supposed to be at this age, that's what you feel like. And you see people like that at this age and there ain't nothing you can do to change it now because they made their bed from the life they chose or whatever. But it's what it is. So it's like I understand it now. So at this age, it's like it's a different world, man. Especially for men. Like, it's hard for a man. No, it's all the way fucked up. Don't nobody fuck. give a fuck about it. Look at it's homeless. True. It's, it's way true. more homeless men out here than there's women. Look at somebody always home. taking a woman. They don't give a fuck about Somebody them. take care of a bitch. Ain't nobody gonna take care of no grown-ass man with gray hair. Not sugar mama? Nah, nigga. You gotta do a lot of manipulate. That's why older niggas fuck with young girls, because they don't want to fall for that bullshit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> for real. That's, that is what it is. You go, but it's, it's hard for a man. Florida hip hop. I'm going back to that. And I'm going back to real estate, even though I know you don't give a fuck about it, because you told me you don't give a fuck about it. You see how I flipped him out of that real estate? He didn't even realize it. We just went 20, 30 minutes. You didn't even know it. No, that's not true. We can talk about real I left estate. It go, because, go to real estate. I know you don't give a fuck about it. I'll talk about it. But I want to hear why you don't give a fuck about it. It ain't that I don't give a fuck about it. I just, I know now people think that's the hustle. Real estate? Yes. Everybody's in the real estate. That's Everybody the old think, hustle. Huh? That's an old hustle. That it ain't is a new hustle. now. But once niggas get into it, it's like, it's like, Lena, once you know when niggas. The popping club. You're like, all right, when this shit done. Out. This shit done. I always know that. I always pay attention. When I see everybody doing something, it's time to not do it no more. Or now, too, especially this time, I, I, I see a recession coming. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, a recession is coming. Yeah, so it's like, man, it's like, if you know that, you wouldn't fuck with this shit right now. So if it, like, it's like, why would, like, that's, that's my main thing. And on top of that, you really gotta have some money to play with now to even fuck with. Like you gotta have some money where you you don't care if you lose it. And most people are just doing this. And what I see now is the hustle now is making people, all right, we gonna get you in the real estate, flip this house and this, yeah. that, whatever. You gonna get your head knocked off. It's just too, you ain't got but enough money to play with. But aren't you gonna get your head knocked off in any new business venture? Yeah, but that's a lot of money for an average person to lose. Like, say, for instance, you got a hundred thousand dollars. They say, all right, I'm gonna give you a hundred thousand dollars, and now it ain't so, but so much you can buy with a hundred thousand. Now that's gonna flip into something the way you thinking it's gonna flip. It's gonna you gonna lose that money, bro. <laughs> like you, cause you gonna get finesse, cause those people are already them bought twenty of them bitches, and they just flip them just for you to buy. Yeah, but land is the only thing that they're it, not buying land. They yeah. buying houses, and and even if you buy land, you gotta know how to buy it. You can buy some bullshit land. Okay. You can buy some bullshit houses. Like it's That's true. you really gotta know, but it's going back, people seeing this as an opportunity. And I get why people like that, because people looking for a way out. At this point now, as much as everybody acting like they get the money, I know they're not. You know what I'm saying? Like Me too. I know for sure. You know what I'm saying? It's, and I see it. And so Well, how are you telling who's getting money and who's not? I know how I'm telling. I can tell just by the look like you can you can see how people move. Certain and shit you're is, not gonna do. Certain, certain shit I'm not gonna, if you got money, you're not just finna do some shit like this. Like, it was like, if you making boohoo money, I'm not finna goddamn host a club for $2,000. Like, I'm not, I'm not that nigga. I'm not finna do, or if I'm, I'm not finna be doing no goddamn, all right, I can change your life seminars. All right, I did this. I'm not, you, you not, you're just hustling the, you're doing the hustle thing. And I don't yeah. knock it, but that's just not me. I don't do that. I don't, I can take advantage of a lot of people. I just don't. And I, I don't. And I just see it, and I see real estate is the next manipulating the average person. And I'm here for the people, and I don't like manipulating people. So if you're here for the people, and that's the average hustle today, 
What is Duvall's plan to hand down generational wealth? My, who I am? Because they taught us, it, they said it was, oh, as far real, as generational wealth? It was real estate. That's really for my family as far as the wealth, but for the people, is who I am. Because I really, to me, honestly, it ain't hard to pass down stuff to your family. Like, we always tell them I'm doing this for my kids. It don't take that goddamn much to change your life, kid. Like, look at us, look where we at. You know, that's just an excuse. I hate yeah, when no, you My kid that. is straight. I'm yeah, balling. It's me balling now. Your kids, <laughs> it don't take much. Like, come on. Like, you don't need all that shit. But at the same time, too, you want to have for you, you want to set not just money for your kids, because that's another example. My family is a perfect example. My, I told my family from Bahamas. My granddaddy was one of the first millionaires, black millionaires in the Bahamas. Mm. He had four daughters. We still end up poor. So they tell you it ain't money. You see what I'm saying? Or you, or you can look at the hood. It's the information. You can look at the hood. It's been plenty of millionaires come out the hood. The hood's mm. still the hood, ain't it? So they tell you it ain't the money. So you got to put more stuff besides money in place if you're trying to change shit, if you're trying to make shit better for the generation. And that's what I do. The money cool and all, you do need money, but at the same time, if you don't have this right or this right, you gonna get it's gonna go away. I wanted to ask you about the the Gucci strike and their apology, but I know you cool with Ti, so he, he ain't gonna let you wear no Gucci. He ain't, he ain't gonna. He ain't gonna I see, I'm seeing anything. videos. He walking up on nigga. Here, take that off, homeboy. Man, me, that's what I'm saying. Me and Tip talk all the time. Tip do his. He's he's. I call him Martin Luther Tip. That's what he do. Like I say, everybody have their own position in the ecosystem. Yeah. That's what he do. I don't do that. I don't get into the, because my shit is on a bigger scale mentally as far as what I'm trying to do. What everybody else, they do what they, that's what they supposed to do. Like if, if we didn't have niggas like that, we wouldn't be where we at now. So I get it and I understand it, but that ain't what I do. Because for one, I'm not best at articulating shit. I say from my heart, I don't speak like adequate enough or politically correct enough. I say really what I feel and some people, they still sensitize, they still ain't desensitized to to taking what I'm saying and understanding it's not coming from, like people always think I'm saying shit just to be funny or some shit. And I, I do, it come off a comedic way because I'm naturally funny, but it's not, I'm not saying it because I think you gonna laugh. Like I'm trying to piss Joe off. Joe ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not saying it like that. If I say something, I got a reason behind. I'm not saying it's the right reason, but a logical reason in my brain on why I thought what I thought. You see what I'm saying? And I don't, then between me, I don't get mad at you being mad at me. That's why I never got hurt by nothing on social media. And nobody, if I showed you my social media from, if you follow, if you had my social media, you'd be done killed yourself. That shit never did nothing to me. Nothing. You can ask anybody, I've never got pissed off, none of that shit. I laugh more than they do on that, when they fuck with me or say something. You can't fuck with me. I was built for this shit, I guess. Your confidence is just... It's not... It's, it's people take great. my confidence, but my confidence comes from my facts. I can prove everything. Like, I have a life to show that I'm like this. Like, some people use their confidence to be who they want to be. I am this. I can go back and say... Man, that's where it get twisted. I'll do all things. Like, no, nigga, I can go no, back and show you. I've won. This. I've won doing place, this, so I know I've, what I'm yeah. talking about. That's why I can talk about it. I've done this. I've been in this situation. I said, well, what, is, what you gonna do when you do? I've been in all this shit. So I know what it is. The only thing I haven't been was the number one song in the country. But I've watched so many people from watching, and I'm from, and I, I grew up in the Atlanta scene when it blew up. So I've seen everybody, even I've just watched them blow. I was popping doing stand up before they blew up. So I watched them go from this to that. So I've seen them come, seen them go. So I've seen the, the nigga be this and that. So I understand what, it's just when I got, I was like, this is me now. This shit is crazy. Like it's like you see yourself. You gotta watch out when it's you. Huh? Yeah, you gotta watch out when it's you. It wasn't so much watch out with me. It's like, and I'm glad God put it to where I've learned. I'm glad I got it now than back then, because now it's like you can see the bullshit coming in mm-hmm. slow motion. It's like, look at this shit. I don't need none of these motherfuckers. It's is like, that the difference between your 40s and your 30s? Like, how I explain the difference to 20-year-olds is. You can see shit coming in slow motion that you just couldn't see in your 20s. But in your 40s, does it get even slower? Like, can you see it, it coming? On the person. Can you see it coming that life, much? In your life, yeah, because this shit speeds us up. We grow in dog years when you're in entertainment. So you see shit quicker than the average person, and you live life, you do more than the average person, so you will see it. 
But the average 40 year old, it depends on where he is in life. Like, that's why I don't like giving advice to, to people, even career wise, because none of this shit is 100%. Pr- There's no blueprint to none of this shit. And what I might tell you, I ain't gonna tell him. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, you I have, say that all the time. That's why you have School of the Arts. It's like, this motherfucker good at playing this. So I'm gonna focus on this with this person. This motherfucker good at playing. I'm not gonna tell him the same thing I'm gonna tell him. I'm not gonna tell this running back the same thing I'm gonna tell this wide receiver to make him great. So I do the same thing in life. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you what you're gonna be at 40 years old to the, to another person that's 40 years old because it might be different. Now off camera, I could tell you, like you gonna be, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But on this, I don't want them to hear this shit because mm-hmm. <laughs> they gonna really believe that they they me. That's I don't even like telling people how I came up because it don't sound right. It's like it's you, like you said, you it sound too good. Yeah. It's like it's like I did this, I did that, and that's the problem now. People been hearing me and Sean were talking about all day. Like why the motherfucker keep hitting me up? Because y'all we've been told stories on how a nigga sit outside the radio all fucking day and that's how you made it. Or I kept giving my CD out. So now they thinking, this is what yeah, I got to do. That's, that is but why. that ain't what it is no more. It's not that. That's why I don't give advice because <laughs> it's going to all sound crazy. I don't recommend another person doing what I had to do to mm-hmm. get here. Like, no, I said no to wild did shit. You know, did I did you? wild shit. I was, I was prepared for wild shit. Something that no sane man, no sane person will just sign up for. Well, let me ask you this. When you got into the music business, when you got in it, was you like, did you know what was going on or was no you way. just in it? I didn't know a thing. I didn't know a thing when I got in the music business. Well, see, that's the difference. Like with me, I, I knew, well, I knew entertainment. I understood it because I studied it even before. Just like how people studied us from social media. Mm-hmm. I studied BT, I studied movies. I never learned from, I probably only read three books in my life. Rewind for two seconds. Just like people are studying us from social media. Yes. Who's studying us? I believe this. The culture, people, humans. We get all our information from the internet. All of it. So we're just data and lab rats. No, we're the entertainment of the. Like, you know how now we reminisce over Martin Show? Yeah. They reminisce over our shit now. Like, remember when such and such got into it? That's what they're doing now. It's just we, people don't pay attention to it because we just live in it. But that's what they're doing. That's what they, I've always knew that from day one. So just imagine somebody that knew this and not, so I'm able to mold this shit how I want to now. Cause I know you paying attention to me. Whether yeah. you accept it or not, you might not be paying attention, but a piece of me come back to you some type of way. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So it's the same thing. It's just, we, we, we doing the same thing we always did. And I, and I, and cause like I said, I learned in the nineties through, through entertainment, movies, um, Shit, music, all that. I learned through all that. Because that's what it was teaching us, too. It ain't teaching that. They, don't you know teach, what they ain't teaching a goddamn thing. Yeah, and that's why we get pissed off. That's why, not me, but people our age yeah. get pissed off. Because mm-hmm. we learn so much from it. And then when you see a motherfucker ain't learning, you get mad. But that ain't how they learn. They learn through the internet. They learn through studying and watching what we post every goddamn day. Through so, memes. So we shouldn't get mad at the kids who don't really give a fuck about anything that came before them. Did you give a fuck about the shit that came before you like that? I mean, you might gave a fuck musically. Well, I had an older brother. Yeah, you looked up to what he gave a fuck about. Oh, then outside of that, you're right. No, because I tell my dad all the time, I don't give a fuck about Will Chamberlain's 100-point game. Yeah, no, you don't. I like, didn't see it. Unless you play it. basketball. like, But you don't. You and can't they, be surprised that they don't give a fuck. <laughs> he did that shit against a bunch of mailmen. I don't care. Yeah, you don't give a fuck. No, like well, gonna... no, not surprised at it, but how should we feel in response the to it? The same way you felt when they, I mean, the same way probably your dad felt. Like, now you understand, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you're a parent or when you get older, you realize, oh, if you real with yourself. A lot of old niggas ain't real with themselves. It's like they get amnesia. Like, you don't remember. Like, my homeboy, my best friend, we grew up, we... There's three, it was three of us, we all grew up, we was the young, we was the sh- small niggas, but we was in the streets or whatever, but make a short story long, or make a sh- long story short or whatever. One of them died, the other one locked up, and I was the only one that made it out of all three of us, as far as where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. But his son, my best friend got killed, he, he got killed and his son grew up. His son, like, he went to the prom and he took a picture with a chopper, like this here. 
And so my other homeboy, I told you that guy, he come like, man, this motherfucker up here, man, this nigga tripping. I say, nigga, we did the same shit. Like we did the same exact, it's like niggas get amnesia, like, but it's like, how you don't understand? Nigga at prom, he trying to thug it out, he wanna look like Scarface. Nigga, we, we, we all, all our music was Scarface. If you, if you wanted to be a gangster, nigga, like we did the same shit. I recently had to check myself uh, cause my oldest son called me and said, uh, he didn't ask me nothing, he didn't come talk to me about nothing. He said, yo pop, I got a tattoo. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he just carried on talking. And you know, as a old as an old nigga that that tries not to inflict all his old shit on his kid, cause you gotta let your kids be kids. Who they are. I checked myself, cause in my head I was like, "Well, why the fuck you ain't come talk to me about a tattoo?" Like, well, that ain't I know I know guy. tattoo artists. Like, I could have been such a, a helpful that ain't asset. My guy, son, nigga, my guy, Like I told you when my when his, my best friend died, I became the dad. Well. I just found this nigga had another baby. He, and he told me through conversation. You're like, yeah, my other do- son, oh, hold up, your other baby? Like, what the fuck you mean your other? Like, but, but see, we have, a, we have a rapport where he know, like, I can be the old nigga. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to play like I'm trying to be cool to understand. Like, yeah, I just said straight up, damn, you ain't telling me about that shit. You just had a whole full baby. No wonder you out here yeah. grinding and trying to get, you see what I'm saying? So, so you just... They accept you being an old nigga. You just can't be a stubborn old nigga. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. And that's where a, a lot. I of, ain't say nothing to him about it. I just looked at my fiance and I'm, I start. You can't her. say nothing, nigga. Look at you, nigga. And that's you, exactly where I ended up at. Yeah, it's like what you gonna I say? Said, what I'm gonna say? To How old you was when you first got your first did, tattoo? Sixteen. <laughs> Couldn't nobody tell me shit. It was the worst tattoo I ever seen. So I did tell him send me a picture of that tattoo, and when he sent it. I showed uh You should have killed him then. That's when you killed like, nigga, you got this? I couldn't because his first tattoo was, was way better than whatever the fuck I was trying to put on my arm. That's when you should have showed me yours. Like, man, look at this bull. Look nah, at my I, first I tattoo. I covered my bullshit up. He got to get a lot more because it, it damn near looks gay to have, <laughs> to one, have tattoo. one tattoo. To have one tattoo. To have one tattoo, like, I got one right here. You got to all the way pull your shirt off yeah. to show your one goddamn tattoo. <laughs> he got some little tiny shit. I told myself when I get like 70, I'm going to tap myself up. You can't do that at 70. Why you can't? It's like, it's like getting surgery when you're no, older. No, it ain't, man. It's health, by, com- health by, complications. By 40 years from that, 30 years from that, nigga, it'd be some type of technology. That can zit, 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 you can go through like a car wash. I'm going to get my whole shit. I'm going to be tatted up. I'm going to be hard as hell. I'm going to be hard when I'm about 78. My granddad was hard that age, so I can see it. How old your grandparents live? Uh, they both died in their uh, mid-80s. Mid-80s? Oh, yeah, you got a long trade. Me, me, my, my granddad. Well, they from the South, too, though, right? My, well, my grandfather on my dad's side, uh, God bless his soul, was in his mid-80s. His wife died earlier than that in her 60s or 20 years ago. I was in my teens. Uh, my grandma on my mom's side died in her 80s, and I really didn't know my grandfather on that side because he died when I was mm-hmm. much more like maybe three or four. They from all from the South? My father's side. My whole father's side is from the South. And where your mom's side from? Up here. Oh, okay. Well, they live up here. That's not where they're from. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, oh, that's what I needed to ask you before we go. Our Florida conversation. Mm-hmm. What is your Florida Mount Rushmore? As far as rap? Mm-hmm. Trick Daddy first. I guess Luke. Oh, so you got to be sad that Trick Daddy and Trina's beefing. They beefing? <laughs> See, you got to watch Love and Hip Hop, bro. Why would I do that? I'm grown. To That's see funny. Trick and Trina beefing, bro. This is the Florida president. And oh, president they beefing on there? Yeah. That don't count. Oh, okay. That don't count. Come uh, on, you know. Man, uh, you own that. What the fuck you talking about? Uh, you know that don't count. I ain't never seen them two niggas yell at each other. Oh, sh- shit. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, you already know. But like, <laughs> oh, man. I ain't tripping on that. That was funny. That's, that's brothers and sisters. That ain't nothing gonna happen with that. The fuck they beefing for? I don't know. I don't fuck Nah, know. but... Trick, so Trick is at the top. JT Money. Who else out there? Shit, I don't forget. Kodak, I guess. Kodak is like the trick of this generation for Florida. Like, I don't think many people, of people I don't think people it. realize how Trick, when especially after Pac died, Trick took over that thug shit. Cause like he really, Trick was the truth back then. I don't think people, he don't get enough credit. I agree. But um, shit, who else out there that's from, the, from Florida? Uh, 
You said, I mean, a lot of people, like when... when you ain't putting... Uh, you said Uncle Luke, right? Yeah, I got gotta it. say. Uncle Luke is the... I put him up in Mount Rushmore of hip-hop. Not just the Florida. He, uh, it, to me, is him, J. Prince. Um, believe it or not, I might even put E-40 up there with them niggas as far as... Because the way they had the labels and all that shit, 20, 30 side. years yeah. size of it, you got to put him up there. With, and he's relevant to this day as a rapper. Like he's he well, don't get his points. Well, Luke fought the good fight for all of us. Luke to be able to changed say the what, world. Yeah, like Luke, yeah, he the reason yeah. why we got parental advisory yeah, on that. Like yeah. little shit like yeah, that. Like, <laughs> like all that shit just fucking in the music. Like it's him. Like it's like he's the far, forefather of this. What we doing that? All the rap now is damn near something sexual. Damn near. So mm-hmm. it's like him. Like you gotta put him up there. Anybody that don't don't know they they history on the shit or don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. But um. That's an interesting Mount Rushmore you got thus far. And, and Master P. Master, I'm, this is what I'm talking about as far as hip hop moguls. And nobody, I know we got the Russells and the shit like that there, but I think them people is, if not just as powerful, or changed the culture more than they did. Because look at the culture now. The Southern, like, it's like that. Like, it just is what it is. And niggas don't see it. But if you, you would know it if you watched it. I, I've watched. I came up in there and watched all this shit is what it is. Like, I came up in hip hop. That's why music is, that's one of the reasons why shit's so easy for me too. And cause you got a lot of hip hop friends. I had hip hop friends from day one. I grew up in hip hop. You had everything from day one. Enough, God damn it. Hip hop <laughs> is a, like, who didn't grow up hip hop in the 90s? We all rapped in the 90s. Who, who fucking didn't? Like, it was in our shit. It's in our DNA. Mm-hmm. Everything was hip hop. Everything is hip hop now. Everything. Even, nigga, I remember one time. Well, like, yeah, the world just won't acknowledge that, but we know it. The world, it's in us. It's like, I remember one time, when I, I realized one time too, like, Beats by Dre. I'm all the way in Indonesia. They got fake Beats by Dre selling them on oh, the street. Go right to Canal Street. You but I'm just saying, that? all the way over there in <laughs> Indonesia. I'm talking about like that lets you know how far hip hop has come. You would have never, or when you ride in, in Jacksonville, where I'm from, you see your average white person that you wouldn't even think listening to it. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like, I don't see how people mad at hip hop. Because it got where, are we mad at, at young niggas not being street no more? Ain't that what we wanted? Yeah. Like, now, it's like, listen, it's like who wants their kids to be. I'll like be what all we the way live? honest with you. I, I know that might have been a complaint. A little while ago, but t- today more and more, I hear the old niggas talking about, yo, I love that it's not violent no more. Yeah, I love that the shit is peaceful. It's peaceful. Yeah. It's, they having fun. The fun, fun is good. They having fun. Like, I don't see nothing, nothing like wrong, nothing they doing that no other young pr- motherfucker wouldn't do. Shit, nigga, you got a lot of money, and it's bitches, and clothes, and drugs, and nigga, everything you want. Nigga, that's... That's Motley Crue. Like you, we hip hop Motley Crue. Did you see that? That, that I did read that book. And that I didn't read the book. book. You gotta read that book. Like that. They got a movie on Netflix about them now. That shit the truth. But they living their best life. Now, they living their goddamn best life. I love seeing people win that. That especially when you. It's kind of hard to hate on somebody when you know they come from. That's why I see how people hate on Cardi. Like when you see that, like you know, like even if she fell off tomorrow, she won. And she's not falling off the That's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> like what can you... Yeah. If, if she never makes nothing, another song again, yeah, she's it's still like in big nothing, business. Yeah, it's like there's nothing... Like, what the... F- that's even like with me when they say about this song, it's like, all right, now what you gonna do? It's like, nigga, ain't nothing else. I don't have to do nothing else. Everything else is a bonus after this. This shit don't mean... Like, I didn't do this to get number one. I didn't do this to get plaques. That shit was a bonus. Yeah, but you had all your famous friends Instagram the song when it came out. No, so I didn't. I wasn't that. No, they I seen they, them. I seen they rode the bandwagon afterwards. I seen them niggas. Nigga, ask Charlemagne. I because ne- I was about, home saying this. One thing about a lot me of y'all pumping media. up this com- comedic up. comedy shit because it was already <laughs> pumping up. One thing about me on social media, I never asked nobody to tag me. Yeah, it's so corny. I never doing. asked nobody to follow me. That's why it tripped me out when people get trip off by me tagging them and this that because I never had to do that. I never asked it. It happened organically. Now people start doing it once it, once it happened. That's what happens once. That's what's called viral. Even the celebrities become viral. Mm-hmm. They start doing the shit. That's what happened. I never asked nobody to do that. Was off straight off of put it online. And actually, it was really off of me playing it by ear because I knew 
I, my test run was killing with the shoulders, what I did with, 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 with um, Snoop. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well, I did it before, even with jokes. I see people follow my jokes and I make music out of it. What that mouth do? Um, um, dropping dick off. Uh, all them shits like that, that, I did that. And then I was like, oh shit, I'm finna do every song I got. I mean, every joke I got, I'm make a song. And that's what I so did with some, it. So somehow, even with the success of, of this record, you don't feel any of the pressure that normally follows having such a successful record. No, because I understand the difference in love and attention. And yeah, okay. People, when if you ain't used to it, love, I mean, like attention feel like love if you ain't used to it. And and I ain't gonna front, like what this song did, like I mean, unless you had a number one song, and it ain't so much. It's just how people look at you now. It's like if you ain't ready for that shit, if you ain't mentally ready for it. It can fuck you up. And if you ain't, I can't even imagine a young artist doing. Speak, speak to it. That's it's, important. I, don't, I can't imagine a young artist, like, even when I used to do radio and all, like, you come from the old where you really had to. A young artist, they ain't prepared for that shit because it ain't nobody giving them pre preparation for it. So they learn as they go. But being that I was prepared for it, I knew how to handle it in the situation, how to handle the. That's where the 10,000 hours come in. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't. Yeah. 10,000 hours. Like you mm -hmm. really do need 10,000 hours because the 10,000 hours is, it, it prepares you for everything. Well, that's, that's my what, belief with these kids. I don't think they put in the 10,000 hours, one. And two, I think that, uh, I think that their use of social media, I think that their use of social media saves them from some of the pressure. No, it did, it's, it's always been like, say, let's say for instance in stand up, and I use that as example all the time even with social media as comedy. Back in the day, what, what internet comedians is now, that's what Comic View was. Comic View used to put on one bit and niggas can go do the road and make money. Mm -hmm. That's all social media is now. And older comedians used to hate them niggas. Like I've been on the road 20 goddamn years and I was one of them niggas that came up, I, that's why I kind of understand with these niggas now because I came up quick. Like I had a song, I did that song, what's considered viral now, that song blew me the fuck up. And I was a young nigga, a young hip hop nigga, so not only was I funny, I represented a culture that wasn't there. Like nobody, back then, niggas was wearing suits and shit. This nigga caught one on Empire. Like, who, on uh, what? You. What you talking about? A record, you, that record went. No, I'm talking even before that, I'm talking about 20 years ago. This is 20 years I'm talking about. I know, but now you're bringing me to, to now and you're the success that you've caught independently that come from being myself. Like, I mean, not, not being myself, come from understanding I don't need nobody. I've always been my, I'm the most independent out of all these niggas capping and talking. Ain't nobody more, I do what I want to do. I really do. Like, I'm not, nobody can tell me I do when I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, so I've always been there and, once, and I knew that. But it helps when you have a lot of money. Cause you have a lot of money. I didn't always have a lot of money. I had enough to do what but I you, need to do. You've had and it some, wasn't the money you've that- you've had some money for a little while now. Yeah, so, but it built to that. I'm, I know. So I, I even, it's, even from the first step, it's like a ladder. You can't even get to the ladder just to get that first step. And that first step was, I didn't have, I didn't need, and, and then, I didn't think I needed any money like that. I, did, I had what I had. I mean, I did have money, I guess, but it didn't matter back, especially back then, it didn't matter in stand up. Cause back then you really needed to be funny. You see what I'm saying? So it didn't matter about it. And I, I knew how to hustle and make, my first show I made $50 and I thought that was money. Mm -hmm. so, so that lets you know it wasn't, I, I, when I say I had money, it wasn't always a millionaire 20 years ago, but I had enough where I didn't need nobody else. You know what I'm saying? I always was able to get money and I've always, and when I stopped, when I really got into to, to, um, to comedy and started getting on the road and make money, I really gave the streets all the way up. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't have nothing but the street. My first show was $50, and from there, I, ain't, I always made money off, off comedy. So I, I understood, and I guess that comes from generation from my granddaddy owning the business, I always understood how to get money, and money's never been, like I said, money's never been hard for me to get. No wonder this nigga run around talking about I'm living my damn best life. You've been living your best life. No shit, sure, like I'm paid, I, I enjoy life. This nigga got a good credit score, a nice watch. I ain't got no good credit. Yes, I don't do. even know my yes, credit do. score because I buy everything well, well, straight up. It's good. It's like good. So I, That's another thing. Like, I don't agree. I don't know why people care about credit so much. What do you mean? Oh, well, you don't care about real estate. <laughs> so. No, even with real estate. 
If to me with real estate, if you can't buy it, don't get it. That's in anything. Like I don't understand. Like why do we feel like we have to get loans on something or just save up and get it? Okay. And it even makes sense even this when is, you sell it. It's your black black excellence privilege. Even before that, no, some my, people without money nigga, need I, like to I worry told about you. their credit score because well, they, 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 they ain't got it to save up. Well, let's say this: if I if all I got to save is five thousand dollars, I'm gonna buy me a five thousand dollar car. I'm not gonna buy nothing that's gonna put me in payments. And then when I get some more money, I'm gonna buy that. It's really that fucking simple. I don't know why people feel like you gotta. All right, I can't afford to get it, so I'm gonna get a loan on that. Even with a house, if I can't afford to get a house. Because honestly, even if you got a mortgage, you don't own that bitch until you pay it all the way off. You can pay that listen, bitch off 19 you, years on that 20th listen. year. If you ain't pay that mortgage, it ain't oh, yours. Knock it off. You live in Atlanta. Y'all pay that shit off in five years. No. <laughs> no. Because the cost of living equates to the lifestyle that you're making. So it's still the same. Mm, okay. So it's really no I, difference. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's just the mentality of America makes us feel like we got to have this the American dream. To, to do this, think about it. You living your whole life to buy a house. It's the Got biggest it. hustle level. Well, the that's, well, ever. That's, well, that's why they say. And, like, and this is another thing I, I, I want to say about real estate. Like, people don't realize. They're like, oh, you can get these houses and flip them and this, that, whatever, but you don't realize. Let's say, for you get all these houses. You got to pay the property taxes on all these. That means, let's say, for you got. And I don't know how much property tax up here, but it's, it's high in certain sure, places. There's a lot up here. So just imagine your property tax $10,000 a year. That means you got to have $10,000 a year for the rest of your fucking life. Some type of income. You can't retire from it. You got to have some type of income coming in. So it's like, and so imagine if you got 20 properties. You got to pay it on all these. People don't think about that part of it. Because in the midst of you selling this shit, you still got to pay for this shit. So you got to equate all that. That's why I said if you ain't got the money or the, the overhead to even play with some money to fuck with it. Don't play yourself. Don't do it now. Like, don't let these seminars and these niggas telling you you can do this. Like, like it sounds good, but I wouldn't go in that game blind. Stocks. I don't, wouldn't go in that game. That's casino to me. All this shit is, that shit like the casino. Like, I mean, you bet off to me, honestly, you might as well, if you want to just go See what you can do, go to the casino. <laughs> they ain't got too much money. <laughs> no, I don't. I got too much here. Like, I, I ain't got half the money. People, people like, got hundreds of millions of dollars. But I don't need all that to be me. Like, I don't need, I done, done, I done done more than most, I done done more than probably Mayweather. He, I ain't probably never have see his money. I ain't gonna knock it, I ain't gonna say I ain't, but at the same time, I ain't tripping if I don't. But I've, it don't, money ain't make me who I am. And I think people think that now because I'm here now, but if you go look back, you ain't gonna find a bad story in my life. That's why my throwback, throwback Thursday be popping. Because I had a life. Even if God stopped all this now, think about the average, the average person work. They work 20 years and retire. I can retire today. <laughs> I started in 2000, no, 99. I won. Everything else is a bonus. <laughs> I'm just doing this for the culture, for real. I'm really for the culture. <laughs> I figured out that when people say for the culture, they just mean for them. Mm -mm. I'm really. You for may them. be. Well, we've learned that you're the exception to quite a few, quite a few theories. That's why even when I talk online, I be like, y'all don't realize I don't get nothing out of helping y'all. I'm a comedian. Like this, I'm, they still won't come to my shows. I'm still gonna get money. Even if I fell off tomorrow, I got everything I need in place to live forever. Yeah. I'm gonna be all right. This shit is, I'm just really doing this because I enjoy put, putting a good impression on people's life and changing lives for what I think is the better. I'm not, because we don't know what's right or wrong in life, but at the same time, what I see and what I see and what I've seen work with me and I've seen it's made people better people, that's what I do. I do that now. So this shit fun for me. And it's easy. Like, this shit is really easy. Like, super easy for me. Well, as somebody who's doing so much, and, and I'm done with all my questions, but what is, this is gonna sound like one of the generic interview questions, but what's next? Like, what, what do you, what, I enjoy doing this. Do you have, do you have a new goal that maybe, that's what people that fuck you up have in no life. experience in That's it? what people fuck up in life. When you got that goal, you gonna reach it, and then what? 
It's just like being a football player. Then you set a new goal. Yeah, but you're going to keep, that's where people go crazy and get, do drugs. Because, man, think about not, it. There's, there's nothing, like our goals and what we think is a goal is you beat success or, or whatever the world says that. Well, you can have personal goals. But I've you already family goals. Goal. The family goal is being happy and making sure everybody else is happy. Well, no, just earlier we was talking about uh, you want a son. That ain't a goal. That's just I'm going to do it. Okay, got it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not, like, I don't, like, goals are cool to have just for sport, but at the same time, I don't, like, my, 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 my little cousin, his, he wanted a Grammy. He got, he got a Grammy, been nominated like six, seven times already. He only like 22, 23. So it's like, and like I always told him, I always put, instill this in him too, like, like you, don't make them go, because that shit gonna come quick. It's gonna come easy. It's like, well. maybe your goal is to be a rapper. You came that easy, now what? Now you gotta live now. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's like now, it's like, all right, a football player, they get their money at 22 years old. So now the goal is, the hardest thing for people to do is just live and be happy. Whatever, say for instance, like whatever your goal is. What, what, I don't, you ain't gotta tell me, whatever that is, it just happened. Now what you gonna do? Same shit. You ain't, you, no, now you gotta just live. Yeah. Your job is like, I got a house on the islands. I got my, I got my own shit or whatever. And my my motto is, if I don't need it here, I don't really need it. And that kind of keeps me balanced on like I can be happy doing nothing. I can buy peace in myself and be happy. That's kind of what Buddhism is and all that shit. It's like I'm cool with if they took all this shit away and they they have tried and they done it. It it didn't even that goes back to religion. Certain shit when they do something. You don't even realize it. it don't affect your spirit now because you wasn't even tripping off of it in the first place. It's like if an Amish person, if the electricity go out, they don't, oh, sh- we all tripping. They like, all right, get up. Get up. <laughs> and that's, that's the mindset. I programmed myself to where all that stuff, that, that ain't where my peace at. That ain't my goals. My goal is to just be happy and, and watch other people get infected by this shit. That's a good goal. It's easy too, cause there's no like roof to it. You just keep doing it. Well, goddamn it, there's a lot y'all can learn from Lil Duval. You sad fucks. You can learn just by watching me. My actions speak louder. This is just talk. We just talking just cause we bored and using getting content. But no, and I gotta go watch you now. I gotta go dig. 200 weeks back on your Instagram. <laughs> see, see what you the fuck is going on back there. You everywhere, man. Google. You'll see my life. This shit has been a good documentary of it. This, that was a good thing too, that I knew too on social media. I was like, I'm going to have all the proof later on. <laughs> that's, important. that's important. I know we laugh, but that's important. <laughs> no, that's what I thought 15 years ago. I was like, when they started, because I'm a I told you so type nigga. I ain't going to front. I like saying, I told you. I told you, you know what I'm saying? So I got all the receipts when they say, oh, oh, I didn't start this? Boom, I did start that. Fuck out of here. <laughs> who yeah, was, will you, will who you doing have, skits before me? Boom. But will you ever be able to get credit in this game? Like I don't trip off of it. This like game that. is built on niggas stealing from niggas. Yeah, that's why I said you, you can't trip off of it. Like You'll go crazy trying to get credit for what you, what you thought you did. Because everybody's saying they started some shit. I don't get... I don't get credit off of that. I just do it for, for it's talking shit. Like when you think you, oh yeah, you think that? Boom, now prove something after that. I do it for just being a nigga. Like, nigga, you, you, everything you did, I done did. Everything you tweeted, I tweeted 10 years. I got the tweets right here, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you, better go, you better go back and delete some of the motherfucking tweets. What are they gonna God. do? That's for people that's in that matrix, that world that you're trying to get money from them. Mm, that's you what Maul says. You can because you think somebody gonna cut you off. Who can cut you off? Yes, they're gonna cut me off. You in the Matrix, I feel sorry for you. That's why you don't love hip hop. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm gonna love hip hop because of my damn fiance, goddammit. But that's a part of it. I understand what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying. Mm. And and you are absolutely right, even though I don't think that you wanna get cut off either, but still. Bruh, they don't try, no, it don't matter. No, it don't matter. I feel the same way. These niggas tried to cut me off for 20 years. You can't get rid of me. You can't, just can't get rid of me. You can't. I'm stuck I'm, 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 I'm going to figure out a way. That's the hardest part. That's why people are hard with, like, with R. Kelly. He's in our DNA. He's been in our blood. That's what music is so powerful. Even if you don't like him, you stuck with him. I took that shit right out of my DNA. What the fuck are you talking about? I took right. it out. It's gone. 
No more ignition check. Up in the club like. No, no more. It's in the vibe. No more. It's in the vibe. It's, it's not in the vibe somebody, no more. No, somebody else put in another music and you subliminally don't even hear it. Stay woke. It's oh, well, up. yeah. Fucking Cardi song right now is the R. Kelly song. Her and Bruno Mars trying to change some shit around. It's still R. I can hear it. I know it. Yeah, but that don't matter because you old. You ain't, they ain't trying to change your mind. Well, they in the Matrix. They, 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 in, in, the that, matrix. they in that Matrix. They in the Matrix manipulating the young. Yeah, exactly. So it don't matter with you. We don't matter. Hey, I'm done. We don't matter. It's true. Hmm. We just having a good time. Well, old niggas matter to you because you found a way to do it. And I'm going to find a way to do it too. You doing, man. Just keep doing you. We all old. We gonna get old. What's the alternative to get, not getting old? None. Okay, so what the fuck? Do no, you. That's the goal. Yeah. I appreciate you coming out here. No I problem. hope you enjoyed the weed and the fruit. The yeah, chair, man. the fancy lighting. It's your shit. You should put the camera on the goddamn <laughs> no. Ghost of Christmas pants house. <laughs> but listen, man. This is this is this is our workplace. Slaves work here. Th- th- I can guarantee you. Yeah. No, you fucking right. This is some slave work in this motherfucker. Uh, shit, I'm still working in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing slave work in this motherfucker. Joe Button, Lou Duvall. I want to thank Lou Duvall for coming. Of course, we have been powered by Cash App. Uh, we here in my yeah, vent- that's that check. That's what we worried about. Cash App check. They they ran that check. Oh no, they ran a check, but I ain't yeah. worried about them. Yeah, you better be. Not, Say something crazy. You see if that shit come back in. No, they love. Lo- no, no. See the people. The people I do business with. Swirl Films. That's what we're doing uh, special with, Swirl Films. See? I got special, we just did this collaboration, uh, whatever you want to call this shit, like we, they believe in what I need, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the reason why I fuck with Swirl Films, like, they see my vision. Like, if you don't see my vision, it ain't the money, I'm not gonna go for much, you gotta see my vision. Yo, you keep saying that after you have a lot of money. I needed to talk to you back in the day. I know you're saying that, but it's fancy right now. No, no, no. I need to I hear from old Duval. He he been knowing me for a long time. Have I ever chased money? No, we don't chase money. Never. Like I've never. We gonna go get some. Money. We gonna get the the money's easy to get. Like I know, I'm, I'm agreeing with like you. I know. I've I'm, never chased the money. Like I've never like. And like I said, I could have got a lot of money. Like, I've never done so either. But I don't meet many people in the business that move by that accord. No, nah, it's not in the move. When you're talented, you don't have to chase the money. People that's in that town, they what have to get all the money. It's mother- just like, like he always tell me, like certain people, get all the money you can. But certain people that's really, you don't have to do that. Like certain people, we don't have to do that. But some people, you see, he got one song, you be like, yeah, he needs to get all that guy. You better go. Like with me, even like I, I was making money without the song. I was, I was blessed, highly favored and everything. Matter of fact, before this song came out, I really feel like God did this because he, he felt like I owe him. Like, I'm like, all right, you got to work for me now. Because before this, I had already had my mind set on, like, getting ready for after this shit. You see what I'm saying? It's like, all right, let me go ahead and put shit in place. That's why I was on. I'm 41 now, so I'm thinking, I always think ahead, like, 15, 20 years ahead. So I'm, I was on that mindset. But then when this, I was like, all right, I got to go ahead and spread this gospel. So that's, that's where we at now. So I've always, I've never, I'm going to get my money. Don't get it twisted. I'm going to get a lot of it. But at the same time, I'm not. You're not gonna get me with just unless you got a whole. It's gonna take a whole lot of money. Most what niggas, to what? To do something I don't want to do? Nothing. I'm not gonna say something you don't want to do. Uh, something that is outside of. At your, this point, it can't do it today. now because my mind is stubborn. I'm stubborn and I can do what I want to do. Like say for the smile, bitch. Even I ain't even supposed to be singing it like that, but I sang it. And they don't trip off of it. Like, I'm, I'm to the point where I, I can sing Smile Bitch anyway. I could probably sing that shit at church. It's a, it's you see a happy what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it's like, I can be me. So some, I've been able to be me my whole career. So when somebody, that's why I, even like when I was doing MTV and all that, it was, I was really, only reason I did out of loyalty, because the guy did do something for me. Like I said, me and Charlamagne, when we first did the show, that show, he was telling me he'd put us on TV. And mind you, I had been in the game about, 10 years, 12, 13 years already. So I done heard all the Hollywood, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Same. So I said, I told Paul, I was like, look man, I heard all that shit before. And Charlemagne was there too, and he was like, oh, he finna fuck it up. I was like, make it happen. And that nigga made it happen, that cracker made it happen, the next thing you know. So I was, I, out of that, I did certain shit that I really wouldn't be me, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not ignorant enough to, 
I didn't know their business neither, so I trust, all right, I'm gonna play this role for this thing here, but it, didn't, it wasn't best for me, you know what I'm saying, for what I wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? So, so in that way, I did do something, and I don't even think that was a bad thing. I think I did it because I learned too about just, because I don't think the network was wrong, it was just a network. Like, you go and play in their world that they need, it's, that's what it's built off of. And if you ain't, if this ain't your world, and I'm older than most of the kids on there too, so that ain't the shit I want to do ain't for that. So I get it. You just get it. This is my final question for real now. Hey man, your thumbs this, are horrible. You see the nigga thumb? No, that's not true. Hey, that, nigga, it's that only thumb. this one. It's only one thumb. Oh, what happened to that one? See? What happened to that one? This one fell off. How? Uh, Pull out couch when I was three or two. I was down south. Now that one fucked up too. That's not no the hammer ain't. thumbs. No, it ain't. Nigga, Tip got these hammer thumbs too. I Why mean, is this one fucked up? Nigga, that's I this think wide. this is a nice nail. This is an average. I mean, like, this ain't no, the fuck thumb. it ain't. Right, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing, average, no, not knowing you is okay, average. Okay, no, Pause. I am average worldwide. This is America with the big nigga, shit. You Everywhere was... else, I'm the regular side. <laughs> Everywhere else, Mexico, Asia. That nigga said maybe my, not, my maybe not Russia. Normal thumb is fucked up. It is, nigga. That's a fat thumb, like, nigga. Hey, look here, let me see your thumbs real quick. Let me see your thumbs. I thought it was only this one. No, just this part. Let me see the... Look, this is an average thumb. Go put that next to that big ass wide thumb. I'm so glad that you're saying this right now. Hold up. I'm so glad What's you're saying this. Where's my phone? I'll put this Bitch, on Snapchat. Bitch, you ain't taking no picture of my damn thumb <laughs> on Snapchat. Listen, this is my final question. I'm glad you just said that that's an about average thumb. Because oh. that's going to relate kind of to my question here. This nigga going to make it go in there. Since we talk about thumbs. <laughs> no, but it does go in there. And it's my final question. Earlier you was talking about uh, being in touch with spirituality and, and when you are, you yes, know. Yes, I believe in God. Oh, I thought that well, was going to ask me. <laughs> no, I don't give a fuck about that. Uh -huh. But actually, that is what the question is. My cousin says that black churches are some of the worst things uh, for black communities. No, the worst thing for black communities. And I'm listening. Uh, let me finish oh, now. Go ahead. go ahead. And part of the reason he says that <clears throat> is because black churches are doing the job of pushing mainstream propaganda to the black community. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that so much money is poured into black churches and black churches have been a staple in black communities, but what of that money actually goes to the community? Do you know, if you think it's that much money in black churches, just imagine how much money in white churches. It ain't got nothing to do with the black, and we look for that to point fingers. It's well, it ain't about the money. Don't take it from the money. His 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 main point. Even manipulate. His main point was it's black churches pushing pushing white Jesus and that story of that white Jesus on the cross and what that does to our black people today. We push everything that we believe in. Anybody of power. Anybody. If you believe in something, you're gonna push that. That's anything in life. It's just that's what we were taught. We were taught that, like, is Jesus black or white? Even if he was black, who, what? Now that you know that, now what? It really don't matter I, to I, care I, that I, I much. I can't answer that, but I won't. Answer it. I mean, now that you know. It actually goes into that bullshit you just said about how that white thumb is the average white thumb. No, I wasn't talking about the white thumb. I'm talking about the yeah, average. But that is how I got there. Uh, no, because no, you I'm said talking about the average. That, that white thumb. No, I'm talking was about the, the average, average thumb. I wasn't talking about the color of the thumb. My cousin would say, what black man well, is well, going to say? I, I called Clay first. <laughs> I called Clay first for his thumb. But you I'll just. Stick with thumbs. Yeah, like, I knew he I wasn't going to God I, damn it. I knew he wasn't. That's why I called just his thumb. You just went to the black and white <laughs> shit. I was just talking about thumbs. <laughs> this nigga went black and white. <laughs>